You know, this is the first podcast where I've ever been intoxicated or had a alcohol or anything like that. You should try to be, I don't know, clean, sober, have my mind it's with vacation. me. vacation. Yeah, exactly. It's vacation. I'm going to have whatever I want. I'm going to have my booze and I'm going to relax and enjoy myself, all right? Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of time here. I want to make the most of it. So this episode, you're getting drunk, Corey on whatever the news is of the following week but i mean that's okay you know alcohol is legal everywhere so you might as well live it up and enjoy it what kind of what do you like to drink you know if you drink it does it matter well i'm kind of a basic bitch and i like malibu bay breeze i don't like really beer or anything wine and wine coolers though right yeah girly stuff yep yeah (laughs) (laughs) basic white girl drinks If any of y'all follow my Instagram, you know me. I love to try everything. And I, my day to day, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My, like, I don't eat the same thing all the time. I always change it up. I'm always eating and drinking different things. So, right now, we got Corona Light with lime, which isn't the best tasting beer, but, you know, it's doing the job, especially in the summer heat. Yeah, I mean, my Blue Gatorade is pretty good, too. It's actually really nice out. We got a really nice week we did. for this vacation. But before we go too into that, we might as well get the intro out of the way. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Level With Me podcast. It's episode four. I'm your host, Game Bro Corey, and I'm joined with my girlfriend, Megan. Hello. Do you have any uh, alias you want to promote, like your... Twitter name or do you have that? I forgot to ask yeah. you that. I keep doing that. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I have Twitter, but I haven't used it in like forever. We can talk about that later if you want to like plug stuff at the end. That's usually okay. how I do that. But uh, welcome. Uh, when I started this podcast, I always wanted to have you on. You know, Aww. you're my girlfriend, and I know you don't play a lot of games, but you do. Like, you're kind of there, and I'll usually be the one who always will tell you my hot takes on things the second they happen. I'll be like, Megan, <laughs> did you hear that they put uh, Crash Bandicoot and so- or Super Smash Brothers? Like, what's the deal with that? That's stupid. Or, no. I think that's cool, by the way. I wouldn't say that's stupid if that happens. But, yeah, I just I always go to you right away just for whatever, my nerd shit, even though you can't relate. It could be some other game, not even Smash, but... It's mostly yeah. Smash. It's a lot of Smash. <laughs> mostly Smash. I compete in Smash. So that's what I do. I just want to say, completely off topic, but we're recording live from our vacation. We're in North Carolina. This is, is this Duck or Corolla? Corolla. We're in Corolla, North Carolina. We're here for a week. We're... There's a lizard. There's a lizard. <laughs> right oh my God, I see it. That's dope. That's awesome. That is a lizard, not a salamander. My okay. girlfriend... Saw one of those a couple days ago, and she's like, I saw a salamander. I'm like, they probably don't have those here. Well, they probably do. I'm not an expert. Some expert on some expert on uh, North Carolina is going to comment and be like, we actually have salamanders <laughs> here and here. <laughs> she just got up and had to take a picture of it. It's okay. It's okay. Nature's cool. You, you don't see lizards lizard every day. The rocks. But yeah, we're here for over a week what do you say we're like halfway we're almost halfway it's sad to think of it already <laughs> we got here uh saturday midday mm-hmm. and it is tuesday the i don't even know what Four. day it is the, oh, 21st. the 21st i can wait is that accurate i don't even it know if that's accurate okay yeah, it's the 21st yeah. so yeah we're halfway done and it's very sad we don't want to think about how long we have left to uh, be here because everyone loves vacation everyone loves relaxing so yeah we're we are relaxing though we're enjoying ourselves we're having a good time eating a lot of good food drinking relaxing sleeping getting a lot of sleep i have a terrible sleep schedule when i'm at home so it's just good to like actually get some I know, sleep and i'm actually waking up early for some reason like usually yeah, i sleep till like 10 we're like now. the complete opposite <laughs> i sleep like maybe six hours or five and i'm like i'm good let's keep going i when need I, like 10 when i know i should be sleeping more yeah you're like 10 or 12 <laughs> I'll, i'm sorry i'll call you out you can call me out anytime you want but sometimes you sleep a lot but it's sometimes. okay um but yeah, uh, before we go in a lot into our vacation, I just wanted to say, this is the first time I've ever done a podcast. One, right next to my guest, usually I do it online, we're actually here, 
So you're breaking that. You earned that trophy. You earned the first live guest. We're in a room right now in our rental house. We're on the bottom floor. My family's on the top floor doing who knows what. I think my mom was watching the last were- Werewolf in London or something. like. I forget what it's called, but I heard that's a good movie from the 80s. It was ridiculous. I walked up and there were werewolf men, <laughs> like literally policemen, but they were werewolves shooting like mini Uzis at people. I'm like, I want to watch this movie. It looks great. Uh, but yeah, being here... It's kind of neat because I'm recording this on my tablet and I just have my tablet like I'm holding it right in front of me. I feel like I have a command deck. I feel like I'm some sort of like studio executive like recording a professional show right now. But it's not professional. (laughs) It's just, you know, we're just sitting on a couch, you know, with snacks and electronics all around us and beer. And your beer. Empty beer bottles. my Gatorade. (laughs) You should have got another one. I should have. You might be talking a lot. You might have to drink some of the water. water Um... But yeah, our vacation's going well. It's it a lot of fun here. It's really nice. Got a little bit of sunburn. Yeah, we're looking red. We're looking like crabs, you know. We're not <laughs> how, uh, I don't know. I was going to say like a roast, like pork. You know those pork, those big, like when they take a pig and they'll slow roast it mm-hmm. on the fire in Hawaii. Like that's that, that kind of skin you want. But we're looking like crustaceans. <laughs> and not the ones we saw on the beach, ones you nah. eat. There are a lot of crabs here, sand crabs. They're yeah. small. And I like looking at them because I like nature. It's This is a vacation that I feel like a lot of people always be like, oh, what do you guys do there? And the answer is nothing. We just relax. Yeah. We take it slow. We take our time. We'll watch TV. We'll watch movies. We'll rest. But then every once in a while, we'll go out to eat. We'll go out and check shops. We'll just walk around the neighborhood. We'll walk on the beach, you know. We take our days. We don't have there's plans. There's like three islands too, like this one, and there's the one we were on yesterday, and Oak right. Coke. Yep, yep. There's a lot to see, and there's a lot in between each island. The only mm-hmm. problem is it's far. The islands are far apart. Yeah. So if you want to get to the one other island, it's about half an hour drive, and then if you want to get to the island we're going to tomorrow, that's like what two, two hours? Half. Is Probably that just half. to the and location? Then yeah. Then we have like a half an hour ferry ride. Yeah. So ish there's a lot to a lot of traveling but it's still nice everyone to see everything and you know it's nice to just again relax not really worry about work or bills or anything you know in everyone's Mm -hmm. adult life so we're chilling but i mean i guess this is technically work if you consider it work i'm not getting paid to do this so i guess it's not work or it's um a volunteer volunteer sure one day hopefully we'll get paid and you know i want to struggle at work no one likes that I don't know where it's we're American going with dream. this right now. Um, so we've been together for almost, what, four years? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. This is where the boyfriend doesn't know anything okay, and the girlfriend... Okay, I'm going to you out now. Yep. When is our anniversary? Is it July 27th? No. The 28th? No. 29th? Yes. <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> hey. I'm a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> But yeah, we've known each other for almost four years. That's We've been together, not known each other. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. That's great. And you know, a lot of the influence of how I met you, first of all, I thought you were attractive. I liked how you looked. Aww. But <laughs> when I was looking at your Facebook page, I saw that you had like a Last of Us picture. And I was like, oh, gamer girl. Hey. <laughs> you had to find um, the... The picture of me with like the controller that I, I might have actually had it hidden. Like, I, literally I think had, you like, did. I think you showed me at one year. Yeah, yeah, I know what you like, mean. An N64 I think I know what you mean. I think you showed me it once. Oh my god. Oh, I'm glad I had that hidden. And I remember our first date, there was a lot of talk about like Fallout mm-hmm. and stuff like that because I'm not an a very how do i put this i'm not smooth with the ladies i don't know i'm just talking about the things that interest me but you know you also just showed me a bunch of cat pictures yep. so yep that's how i won you over cats are interesting pictures of my cats uh so i usually do this with each, each guest uh you know how, how have you been doing in your just life like pretty life uh, in general pretty basic life go to work sleep how most people are when i ask this question um i mean getting ready for this vacation and for britney's wedding too um so you got two big points you could talk about here do you want to talk about your work or do you want to talk about that whole thing britney's wedding i was gonna say mess but it's not really a mess (laughs) it's like a beautiful ceremony Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, work is just work. It's kind of. Well, what do you do? Enlighten uh, the guests. I work at the... Starbucks. I am a shift supervisor. Ooh, <laughs> wow. I'm um, sitting in the presence of royal right I know, here. I know, right? Um, I don't know. I just serve customers, uh, pull some food for the day, and count some money. What has been, who has been one of your worst uh, customer experiences? Can you talk about that? Or is that technically something you can't um, talk to? You don't have to name any names, but you can tell about an experience. Well... And you could even say your best one. Let's have a good and or a bad and a good. Well, there was a lot of like really nice customers when I worked at the the college campus, um, especially around the time I was like leaving because when I worked over the summer, uh, there it wasn't nearly as hectic. So the people that came were like teachers and stuff like that, or students taking summer classes, and it was nice to get to know them like over the summer. You got to know them more. So when I left to, to like work at the real Starbucks, um, I it, a lot of them were very nice and like you know telling me like they would miss me and just like customers like that they actually build like a connection with. That's what I like really like about working at Starbucks. Like I feel like that's like the whole Starbucks like what Starbucks should be. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of bad customers, too. Like, it's the service industry. You're going to get f- assholes. <laughs> like, But, I mean, mostly a lot of the bad customers have been, like, at the mall. Like, I don't know what it is about the people when I worked at the mall Starbucks. Like, they were just terrible. Like, so rude. And, like, I think the thing is, I think that they weren't going to Starbucks to, like, enjoy, like, what I just explained, like, that bonding you can make with customers. I feel like they were just going there because it was in the mall. And that was, like, I think a big factor in how they, like, treated me and my coworkers. But, I mean, it's good and bad. You know, you always, you're part of, like, a group on Facebook where you see other, like, uh, Starbucks employees mm-hmm. share some of their stories about bad customer experiences yeah, or good customer experiences. And I think it was yesterday you were showing me a story about the one lady. I forget what she was doing off the top of my head, but she like went to the man. It was about the hair and the cup. Yeah. Uh, but that just made me like kind of think when I was sitting there. I'm like, there are some people out there who probably just really dislike going to Starbucks. Like mm-hmm. they're just like, I, I hate everything about this place. I hate all the people who work there. They're all a bunch of like idiots who never get my drink right, and they're all lazy and blah blah blah. Like everything. And I never, like, even considered that. Like, that might also be, like, their only place to go get coffee. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm not trying to, like, of course, you know, say no. anything bad. Poo-poo Starbucks. I'm just <laughs> saying that that's... Some people have that. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's how some of these stories will happen sometimes. Is people just don't enjoy that. And that's all they have. Like, they're almost forced to do that. Yeah, and or, I get... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say. Or they're just, like, having, like, a bad day. And they don't know how to, like, sure. take it out. Right. And, if something little happens, like, if their drink is made wrong, like, to us, it's like, okay, it's just one more drink. But, like, to them, it's like, the hay that, wait, is it the hay that broke? What is that saying? The straw, the straw. that broke. Yeah. The, the horse's, horse's back. back. Yeah, like, that's that. It's like I'm that drunk thing. I'm drunk and on I got that. Okay, I'm drunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm an adult. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that drink that we might not think is like a big deal to remake, like that just might be like the thing that just sets them off and then, you know, so you gotta try not to, some days Look, you just like get mad and you're like, oh, but some yes, you just gotta not let it That you. is the main key of this um, conversation. Everyone has a bad day. People have a lot of shit going on in their lives. Someday, who even knows what it is? Some family member died maybe they're going through a breakup whatever you have to treat everyone like a human being you can't walk into these food industry businesses and just be a complete asshole to the workers whether it be mcdonald's starbucks whatever treat them like a human being because they are a human being you don't know if they're also going through these same problems and they work have to work at that job like come on you have to just 
give mm-hmm. people respect. Like, it's crazy the amount of arrogance that people are just so, like, me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. And they don't care about anyone else. And that goes for a lot of things, too. Not even just them treating them like that way, but if they just, like, throw the trash on the floor or disrespectful with that in that way. Like, come on, just takes five seconds like throw your straw wrapper in the trash or whatever yeah if you spill a little coffee or cream maybe like clean it up with a tissue or napkin whatever um what else was i gonna ask you about the wedding you've been pretty busy with that yeah i like had her bachelorette party and her bridal shower and um her like i was taking her to get her dress altered and then pick it up again then i had to get my dress altered for the wedding I feel like it's just been, like, you know, this and the vacation and work. That's, like, my life right now. I mean, I don't mind at all. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm complaining. But it's just, like, that's what it is. Like, I've just been busy with that stuff. I don't think you mentioned it, but you're the maid of honor. So she has to do everything. Like, she had to plan the bride's, what's it called? Like, the bachelorette bachelorette party. That's the word. I mean, luckily, the rest of, like, the bridal party and, like, her mom and her soon-to-be mother-in-law also helped, too, so... Because, like, it's my first wedding, and, like, them having... Yeah, we're young. Yeah, them having... Like, having them to well, help I'm not me... Young. Yeah, you old man. <laughs> um, them there to help me with that, and it was, it was like, very helpful, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it was... Uh, it's a lot. But, mm-hmm. uh, hey, it's, it's almost over. They get married next month. I know, month. I'm excited, yeah. It's coming up. Yeah. Um, why don't we move on here um we can get into more of the talk about the vacation when we get into our second segment so we're gonna move on into our first segment here which is just the news um again i'm trying to diversify my podcast i don't just want to do all gaming stuff so i did get a couple things here that are uh just you know generic like media movies shows stuff like that so uh hey you ever hear of this show called Black Mirror? No, I, I, mean, I don't think so. Well, uh, <laughs> if you haven't, they're uh, making a fifth season. This is a news article from IGN. This is posted a couple days ago. It's kind of old at this point. But Netflix has revealed that the, revealed the first trailer of Black Mirror Season 5, which confirms the release date of three new stories next month. The next set of dystopian stories from Charlie Booker, will hit the streaming service on June 5th and will feature a cast including Sherlock's Andrew Scott, Avengers' Anthony Mackie, and Miley Cyrus. I actually didn't know any of this. I saw this trailer hit a couple days ago, and you know me, but I like to stay clean on a lot of mm-hmm. stuff. I usually like to watch one trailer, but I like to go in as dry as possible and not look at spoilers or anything like yeah. that. Um, we didn't even watch season four yet. We except still the one. need to catch up on four. We did watch I mean, Bander, not, Bandersnatch. Luckily, Bandersnatch it, was dope. Yeah, luckily it's not like a story. Also, I, yeah, it's an, Scott, I like it's an it's an anthology. That's I love anthology mm-hmm. series. I love the Twilight Zone. I've loved uh, the Outer Limits is another one. VHS good movies I like. So, oh, do you have something to add? I was just gonna say I knew about the Miley Cyrus because my one coworker told me. Well, you just. <laughs> That's okay. We'll yeah. go back. I'm um, trying. I'm pulling up the trailer uh, here. We're going to watch it live. It's only a minute 40. What Avenger is that? I don't know. We'll have to watch it. We're watching it right now. We had the sound off. So, some people on their phones. He's got a gun. I didn't know this comes out next month. That doesn't surprise me, though. There's uh, that guy's, That's the guy from Sherlock. Okay. There's a grill. That makes me excited for more. Social media. That's a Tinder. cool phone. It was Tinder? really thin. Something like that. Oh, that's Falcon. Isn't that the guy who's the Avenger? Yeah, that's Falcon. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's funny. I have a story about him. Is that Miley? No. Uh, I don't oh, know. Oh, <laughs> well, it's like an AI, like, little robot thing. That's cool. I wonder if no, these. Miley. I wonder if these are going to be longer then, because there's yeah, only I think so. three. Oh, Maybe they'll be like an like hour Hannah and a half. Montana. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix invites you to experience three new stories. This little AI robot. Oh, man, we really need sound for these. (laughs) Some sort of app thing. That changed how you see. Yep, it's Black Mirror, the technology future, the world. 
So they're almost going for like an homage here of almost like the first series of Black Mirror. There was only three episodes, right? So maybe it's almost going for that. Even though they're about who knows what ones like some VR. Oh, yo, a VR fighting game. Oh, that's dope. That's really cool. I'm into that. What a good little stinger at the end. Maybe there is a little more. There's still a couple seconds left. Now it's just Netflix. Yeah, it's just advertising other shows. We live in June fifth. That's crazy. Yeah, we do live in Black Mirror. With all the ads. That looks cool. It does. I'm into that. I I kind of like it because I still don't really know what it's about. Yeah. Um. Ooh, sorry, but it still gives you like a little teaser into, and I like that because you don't want to go in knowing everything. Like it looked like there was some VR. Like that's really all I got from that. And like some something like, was about an app, and yeah. I don't know what that first guy was, with the gun. Looks cool. I'm in. Uh, that's cool. I'm very excited to see that. Let's. Speaking of some uh, blackness and the darkness. Yep. <laughs> you know who's a dark guy? Yep. Batman. He had a dark life. The new Batman actor has been revealed. This comes from IGN. Robert Pattinson, Nicholas Holt, reportedly for front runners to play the Batman. Twilight Star said to be top choice to replace Ben Affleck. Uh, so this is a story. This came out a couple days ago. Let's read more about it. Deadline reports that the role of Batman remains uncast, but but that both Robert Pattinson and Nicholas Holt, beast in current X-Men films, are the for- front runners to star the, orig- the original report follows. Twilight star Robert Pattinson will play the title role in Batman. The director, Matt Reeves, upcoming DC Comics movie. While well, sources say it's not yet a done deal, Pattinson is the top choice and expected to close shortly. Warner Brothers had no comment, Variety reports. I think this actually... I don't know when this got reported, but I think it is confirmed that he is going to be the Batman. It's five days ago. Old twi- at least this article. Old Twilight Man. I actually don't think I've ever seen a movie with uh, Robert Pattinson in it. Have you? I mean, Have you Twilight, watched the Twilight? I watched Did the you first watch them all? one. No, like, I wanted to be on that train because it was, like, cool when I was in, like, seventh grade. And I was, like, I watched the first one. Apparently, they were really good after the first one. Um, I mean, I always said I was Team Edward, because to be honest, like, I don't know, I thought he was, like, cooler, even though he was, like, a glittery <laughs> vampire. But I don't know, like... He the, the Hot Topic stereotype. Yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, I mean, I, I think we should give him a chance. I mean, I, he has openly shit-talked Twilight. Like, he yeah. doesn't like it. Yeah, I heard about that. And... I'm pretty sure the uh, the girl that plays Bella too, Kristen. I think her name's Kristen Swanson. Is it Swanson? I don't know. Well, the girl I've that never played watched Bella. Twilight. She also, I think, hated Twilight. I think everyone involved in that movie hated it. Um, I mean, I could see that the fandoms have uh, blown that movie and series yeah. out of proportion. So. I mean, I think we people are like shit talking him. Like, it's not going to be Edward as batman it's gonna be Robert yeah Pattinson as right batman. exactly like i don't understand why people like let him just live down the role like yeah it was just one role mm-hmm. like i feel like people thought the same way about like jared leto being the joker and i'm not gonna sit here and say he was the best joker or he even really did a good job but like he was fine as the joker i mean he was only in that suicide squad movie for like five minutes but the I'm... Other... I'm sorry what go ahead saying? I was going to say, the other guy, Nicholas Holt, they say he's from X-Men, but it's, like, kind of weird because um, all I can, like, think of him from is the show called Skins, like, the UK version in the first, like, two seasons, I think. He played the one character in Skins, and he was also in Warm Bodies. Do you know who that guy is? He- I no, think you'll I was know actually him once gonna you see him. look it up here real quick. He was in the sh- in the movie Warm Bodies, where the the zombie has like feelings for the girl. Yeah, I know that movie or show. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I yeah. feel like honestly, I feel like Robert Pattinson might be a better Oops. choice, just based on oh, how here. they look. Right there. Eh, they could probably both. Either of them could pull it off. I mean, really, anyone can kind of pull off Batman. True. Like, 
I really enjoyed Ben Affleck as Batman. It's kind of sad that that didn't work out, but... I haven't seen him in any new stuff, like Nicholas Holt. I'm, yeah, I curious just have the image of, like, to skins, see this. Tony. I think they said it was going to come out, like, 2021 or something. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting to see uh, what's up with that. I like Batman. Uh, hopefully they can bring it back. DC mm-hmm. has uh, kind of been not killing it. Uh, I yeah, mean, I love they've the, been trying to keep up Wonder with Woman. Yeah. The thing is, I tell everyone this, they just rushed into it. Yeah. They wanted to rush in what Marvel has, and that's their ultimate blunder. Yeah. They needed to wait time to set up and set up the uh, universe that they're creating. I think I actually exactly. had a conversation like this on my last podcast, but yeah, they need to get their shit together, and hopefully they'll get a decent universe, quote-unquote, but now they have a lot of work to do, considering... There's going to be, like, two different Batmans, and what, is Aquaman supposed to be like, yeah, that's just Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, there's a lot going on Mm -hmm. there. Uh, we actually just talked about this guy, the actor who plays, uh, Falcon. Which one was it? Uh, Uh, what's his name here? It's Anthony Mackie, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier will reportedly return in the disney plus series so this is a new series coming to disney plus based on falcon the falcon like from mm-hmm. uh or yeah. the marvel series and winter soldier and apparently the events of this will take place after endgame so that's kind of interesting uh this article is from ign let me read here a little bit carrie so will be directing disney plus's six-part miniseries of the falcon and the winter soldier and captain america's civil war daniel Bruhl and emily van camp are also in talks to return as zemo and sharon carter respectively as reports by deadline buell and van camp would join stars anthony mackie and sebastian stan in the miniseries that will debut exclusively on disney plus in august 2020 Colonel Helmet Zemo is the... Okay, that's just about the character. Yeah, we all know about that. Uh, he was in um, Civil War. He was kind of like the villain of Civil War. And that's just about Sharon Carter. Or, yeah. Uh, here's something about Civil War... Or Endgame. These are spoilers, so be careful. Deadline sources have said that old Captain America giving his shield to Falcon at the end of the Avengers Endgame oh, I forgot about will that. figure into the miser- miniseries, but the studio has no comment on where it goes. So you can maybe see him turn into the full. There is a thing where he becomes Captain America, but he's basically Captain America with a jetpack. Oh. Like he'll keep his suit and use the shield, but I think he's still Captain America. Maybe he gets a new name, so that's pretty cool. Um. So yeah, I think that's neat. I don't know if you knew about this. I, I think they it. announced this a couple months ago that they'll have uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. There's literally no mention of what the Winter Soldier one will be about. I mean, there's it really doesn't say even what the Falcon one's about other than it'll just get the shield. Like, they Wait, are they, that. are they, like, in the... Together? Or are they having their separate things? I think this is... There are two. Like, it's the, Winter, the, the Falcon people? and the Winter Soldier. So, I think the other two characters, they just don't know what series oh, okay. they'll be in, but they'll be in them. And I maybe it's either one series or it's going it's to be two part. that are connected. So, like... I think they are connected. I think it's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and they're connected. So, I think these two characters that are returning are going to be involved in that. I don't know if you remember the girl, Sharon Carter, but she was like a blonde girl. She's like, uh, you know, the guy who Captain America like falls in love with. Yeah, I think Peggy. it's like her daughter because I think her name's like Peggy Carter or something like that. So that's cool. I'm mm-hmm. still interested in, in that. Uh, Disney Plus is that that's a streaming thing, right? Disney Plus comes out this year, I believe, in Are August. We get that? I would like to get that because they there's going to be good stuff. pretty and much they're, every they're Disney plucking everything from all the other yeah. streaming. <laughs> And I love Disney, like, especially if I'm just, like, going to sleep, like, and I don't want to get into a series, then I just put on, like, a Disney movie. Disney owns Simpsons now, you know that? They own everything. They, yeah, they, it's not, it's just a matter of time. Uh, let's move Monopoly. on from that. Yeah. Yeah, Monopoly, for real. Yeah. Okay, article, are you gonna load so I can make my segue? Nope. Come on, you're making me lose my flow here. Thank you. Thank you, internet. The internet here is so bad. It's so bad. 
why they put the router on the bottom floor. It's a three-story uh, yeah. uh, vacation rental. For some reason, I have decent connection up there, and I'm, like, right next to the router yeah, we're down here. Yeah, literally a room over from and the router. it's not great. I also should... I don't know why I have Skype there. Skype's garbage. I need to get that off yeah. my tablet, but that's completely nothing. Speaking of, Mar- <laughs> speaking of Marvel, speaking of Disney, hey, the highest grossing movie of all time. Updated? Star are this is all this is from IGN this is the highest grossing movies this is updated this is in rankings and all that, really all that happened is that Avengers moved up one so they are now number 2 they just didn't... took out Avatar John Wick yeah, yeah I was going to say did There was John something Wick... about John Wick I think John Wick just beat him in box office numbers but not like oh, the movie okay. overall so Right now in standings of the top 25 grossing movies of all time, number one is Star Wars The Force Awakens. That's crazy. That, that's still... I believe that. Well, it was a big deal when it came back and it looked mm-hmm. really good. And it's been like 20 years. Yeah. It, well. Less than 20, but almost it was 20. It's like, yeah, whenever Return Revenge of the Sith came out. And number two, now Endgame. Also crazy. It's just, when you see stuff like Star Wars and Marvel, like at the top it kind of makes you think like what does this do to like the film industry like how do they look at this and be like well if we kind of copy what they do like maybe we can also make as much money yeah then it just turns out to be shit yeah it kind of sucks um number three is avatar i'm surprised that made so much money i think it was just the craze of the what was it like IMAX 3D or yeah, real D. A lot of people said it was awesome seeing Avatar like that. I didn't see Avatar like that. I enjoy I Avatar. Fell asleep during a lot. That it's movie. long. It's like three hours. A lot of people. I, fell asleep 10 I feel like a lot of people in. always dismiss Avatar, but it's a good movie. It's not my favorite, but I enjoy it. Number four, yes. Black Panther. Marvel killing it. Or Disney even killing it. Disney owns like all of these franchises. Yeah. That's crazy, and. Yeah, Black Panther's a great movie. We're not... And they also own number five. Number five, Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> uh, yeah, should we keep going? Hey, look, a non-owned Disney property, number six, Titanic. You gotta, you gotta watch I've it. never seen Titanic. How is this? I don't know. It's just about a boat, and it sinks, and I don't know, uh, Leo drowns. Yep. Number there seven. for both of them on that door, bitch. <laughs> number seven, Jurassic World. <laughs> another Disney-owned is it no is it's it? not no. warner brothers owns oh, warner this brothers. i think i got they, confused they don't because own they have the jurassic, jurassic. Park ride yeah that. universal yeah. i get those so this confused. movie sucked by the way it was just the hype oh it's so bad oh look there's a disney one. number eight marvel's the avengers the first avengers movie how did jurassic world beat that it's crazy come on because there's more hype it's the thing with the Star hype Wars. culture i feel like more people are going to these Okay, so clearly you can see that a lot of these top grossing movies are kind of relatively new. What is it? Is it hype? Is it how they cut the trailers? Like, what is the thing that are making more people go to these movies? Because the oldest one is from 1997 here. So what do you think is the main thing? And if we go to 9, it's The Last Jedi. So that's even earlier. What's 10? Just to say here. The Incredibles 2, that's fucking weird. They're all sequels. Yeah. I mean, except... 11, no, The no. Dark Knight. That's a sequel. That's the second in the. Uh, What's the first one? Batman Begins. Yeah, Twelve. No one cares Rogue about one. That one. It's not that good. They Thirteen. All know, like, the Ew. Dark Beauty and the Beast. Let's keep going. Sequel. T- tell sequel, me if you need remake. me. Tell me if you want to I'm say bitter. anything about this. Fourteen. Finding Dory. That movie was all right. Fifteen. The Phantom Menace. That was technically a remake or not a uh, remake. Sequel. A sequel. Yeah, I'm sorry. A sequel. A sequel. That was a good. Uh, one. People should talk then, but I like um. The prequels are good. 16 og star wars episode 4 new hope let's go 17 another marvel avengers age of ultron oh it's not that good let's keep going 18 the dark knight rises yeah everyone loved the dark knight so They're of course like that superhero. got oh. a lot of hype <laughs> number 19 <laughs> shrek 2 didn't see that one coming it, it's I a sequel it though it is you're right still sequels number 20 et i've never seen et i haven't either i don't really i'd want watch to. it eh, it's steven spielberg he's it's good a sequel. 21 the hunger games catching fire i don't give a fuck about the Another hunger sequel. games number 22 pirates of the caribbean dead man's chest that's the third one right yeah davy yeah. jones came in the third one i like the, the pirates of the caribbean caribbean series no it's okay 23 the lion king the original animated one i bet the animated one's gonna 
getting here. I could predict yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, that's funny. There's a trailer, trailer for it. Number 24, <gasps> Captain Marvel. Yes. Oh, wow. That's surprising compared to things like Guardians. Is that spit? No, it's a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> And then number yeah. 25, the other Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. How did Jurassic Park not even make it on here? That's crazy. That's it. Uh, a lot of sequels, a lot of Marvel movies. A lot mm-hmm. of, again, a lot of stuff that's it's recent. Train. Yeah, I think it's a lot about trailers, cutting trailers together and editing and stuff like that. And something about the anthology and the, I don't know. It's like, I think it's the hype. And I think it's a lot about, like, people seeing it, and they see how other people react online, and like, well, I want to be part of this thing. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of people... They gotta make that feeling like they belong, or they're, like, in with a cool, like, thing. I I know a lot of people who, like, didn't see any Marvel movie, but they wanted to see Endgame, just because it was, like, a big thing, and I'm like... I mean, I've been like that, too. You don't want to be, like, that person that's just, like... Oh, I didn't see it. And people are like, what? You didn't see it? Oh, you know? And, you know, yeah, like, you pretty much nailed it. I I honestly forgot my point because I've had one too many beers. <laughs> so let's just, let's just move on to the next topic here. Uh, we all, we were talking about movies and directors. You know, he's a good director. Actually, he's a writer. George R.R. R. Martin. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's good. I've never read any Game of Thrones or where I've watched the series. But nevertheless, this is coming from IGN. George R. R. Martin has consulted on a video game out of Japan. This comes from IGN. George R. R. Martin has explained his future after Game of Thrones, and it may include a game of some kind. In a post saying goodbye to Game of Thrones, Martin explains that he, ha- he has a lot, of, a lot in the works, including developing eight shows. Whoa. Wow, yeah, I didn't know this. Five at HBO, two at Hulu, one at the History Channel. That's random. <laughs> and some sort, some sort of films, and of course, his remaining books in the Song of Ice and Fire Saga. Yeah, he's never going to make those. Nope. But he also adds, I've consulted on a video game out of Japan. Martin offers no more detail than that, but he hasn't stopped speculation running wild. Most noticeably, it lends some credibility to long-running rumors that Martin has been working with Dark Souls, Dark Souls Studio excuse me, from Software and its president, Hideki Miyazaki, on a RPG of some sort. However, there's been no official word on that collaboration nor any new game featuring Martin's work. It's always worth pointing out that potential video games may never make it to development, so it's also possible this project... Whatever it is, won't emerge in the end. Uh, and then lastly, Martin's post included a lot more detail on how the book's ended will dif- ending will differ from the show, including the soon-to-be inc- iconic quote, How about this? I'll write it. You read it, then everyone can make up their own mind and argue about it on the internet. Ain't that the truth? Mm-hmm. Isn't? That's what the internet's for. I think it's interesting, before we get into this topic, or this article here, like... Again, we have never watched any Game of Thrones, but nope. it's kind of weird that George R. R. Martin, he's the guy who created this series, and he got to see the reaction of how the series ended mm-hmm. with the last couple episodes, and a lot of people don't like it. And now he kind of has the power to go in there and change it or give more explanation to the things to almost make it good. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting because there isn't really any other piece of media that we can look at who's done that usually it happens like everyone will say oh the books are better than the movie or the Mm -hmm. show but it's never been the other way around where the source media came out after the uh recreated media or whatever you call it so that's interesting but then it begs the question is it like i don't know is this what he had originally planned or is he just gonna yeah suck it up some and conspiracy be like... theory stuff where yeah did he just not write these to give you a reaction because what if he actually wrote this stuff and then he knew people wouldn't like it so he's like huh oh, now i can like edit now he it. got double money yeah. from the show and yeah. now he's gonna get more because people are gonna be like oh, not to mention book... all these shows he's yeah. making apparently the book will be like the ending we wanted and then they buy the book so he has the money from the show and the hbo subscriptions however that works and then he also gets money from people buying the book. Double money. Now he's going to be able to afford 20 turkeys. Usually he eats only 17. He's a big man. I don't yep. know if you ever see George R. R. Martin. He's fat. Uh, but anyways, 
I thought this was interesting because, hey, I like me from software games like Dark Souls and Sekiro and Bloodborne. And there actually, this, it didn't mention it in this article, but there was a rumor about this a few months ago or a little while ago. And this has kind of been a, big, a, been a big rumor floating around. This look, it actually came from today. So this is technically like some breaking news or a hot topic right now. But hey, I'd be down to see what George R. R. Martin wants to do with a FromSoft game. I usually mm -hmm. like whatever they do. And, you know, people like the writing in Game of Thrones. Not at the end, but he might have not had like a lot of part of that. So he's at least good at making these fantasy worlds, whatever it be if it is fantasy but again i think it is important that we do uh reiterate the statement at the end where there are a lot of projects that happen so nothing could come of this because video games are weird but hey i'm optimistically optimistically excited to see what happens i mean e3 is like two weeks away so from all we know there could be a new game and then george r, r. martin could be out there and be like covered in uh nacho cheese be like here's my oh new my here's my new game uh um, you swing the sword and fuck dragons i don't know whoa do you think that he would make like a game of thrones game yeah i could see that it's... Do you think they would like it be from from software yeah 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 so that? the the thing that again this is an interest is interesting point about that is do people now still have interest in stuff like that because of how poorly the series ended mm -hmm. like people are saying like Imagine if you signed up for a deal two years ago about this hottest new franchise, Game of Thrones, but then you get here and people are like, oh, this is crap. I hate it now. Yep. So, like, you know, it's kind of going to be like, are people going to even want that? But, hey, they make Walking Dead games and no one really cares about the Walking Dead anymore. Negan was in Tekken. Do you know what Tekken is? It's yeah, like a game. Japanese. Yeah. That's so random. Uh, you, you ready to move along mm -hmm. to the next subject? Yeah. Speaking of From Software and Japanese video games, hey, PlayStation, you know them? No, yeah, I think so. Yeah? We've got <laughs> yeah. Two, of, yeah. two of their systems in our house. Uh, this is from IGN. This also comes from today. PlayStation, today being March 21st. Or, yeah, that's when we're recording the podcast. PlayStation Productions to adapt Sony's games for film and TV. Sony Interactive Entertainment has announced the launch of PlayStation Productions, a production studio that will take Sony's catalog of video game titles and franchise and adapt them to film and television. As reported by The Hollywood Reporter, this new enterprise will be led by Asad Quizablash. Quiz, did I say Kizabash? that right? Kizabash. Kizabash. Uh, I'm, sure. I'm probably butchering it. And overseen by the chairman of the Worldwide Studios at SIE, Sean Layden, and is already in production on its first slate of project and has set up shop on the Sony Studios lot in Culver City. Where's Culver City? Do you know? Mm, I'll look it up right now. We've got 25 years of game development experience, and that's created 25 years of great games, franchises, and stories, Layden tells The Hollywood Reporter. We feel that now is a good time to look at other media opportunities across streaming or film or television to give our world to life in another spectrum. From The Last of Us to God of War to Metal Gear Solid to Spire of the Dragon, PlayStation has been home to many different stories across many different worlds. Sony believes that with a library of more than 100 original projects ranging from adventure to sci-fi to action to mystery to horror, PlayStation Productions has a wide breadth of concept ripe for adaptation. Can they not have this I know, Sonic just that. thing like, just blaring they... in all these games and franchises to actually have like a beloved like fan base and just overall like why? I know. Why? Cities in California. I was gonna say it's probably in California. Um, let's see. It, let me skim through this article. See if there's anything else I mean, interesting before we start going. You can. Say I hate any to thoughts. say it, but Sonic does have a a pretty big and consistent fan base. Yeah, DeviantArt's pretty active. Mm -hmm. You can always find some good stuff there. Yep. Uh, uh, let's just read some more of this. Unlike most video game adaptations, that are usually a game studio licensing out its IP. Sony will be producing these projects in house with PlayStation Productions and sister company Sony Studios will help distribution. Instead of licensing our art or IP out to studios, we felt that better approach was for us to develop and produce for ourselves, says Kizzlebash. One, because we're more familiar, but also because we know what PlayStation community loves. Uh, where's the two here? Um, okay, it's gone. 
Uh, Quizzlebash, Layden, and the team have been working on this new venture behind the scenes for the past couple of years. They've been talking to many in film industry, including Transformers series producer Lorzeno D. Bonaventura. I hope I said that right. And Marvel Studios head Kevin Veige. We looked at Marvel, uh, at what Marvel has done in taking the world of comic books and making it the biggest thing in the film world, says Layden. It would be a lofty goal to say we're following in their footsteps, but certainly we're taking inspiration from that. Okay. What was I just talking about a couple articles ago? How these people don't need to rush into what Marvel is Mm -hmm. trying to do. And I don't already like that statement where, hey, we want to do what Marvel's doing. Yeah. (laughs) Um, ah, live disappointment on the podcast right now. Like, that makes me very, the opposite of hopefully optimistic. Like, now I'm like, uh, I hope they don't botch this because... They're just gonna put out so I mean, much stuff and not care about quality. You see this with every movie nowadays. Every movie nowadays always has a stinger at the end of the trailer. Like, oh, maybe we'll make another one. Oh. Yeah, you're right. And why does every movie have to be that? Movies don't have to be that. Movies don't have to be based on a franchise. Like, we don't have to remake Ghostbusters. We don't have to remake Jumanji. Stop. And I get why people do it. I get why marketing does it. It's because people don't want to risk a new thing. They want to go to something that's exactly. safe and coddling. They're like, oh, I know Ghostbusters. And they, that's exactly they why. They shoot Slimer and, yeah. I'm telling you, that road here that has the Wendy's, the McDonald's, the Plaza Azteca. There's a strip of road that, yeah. It's all fast food. This has all People don't want to branch out and try new things. Things that you think you'd find everywhere. You, you see it in, like, these movies that come out. Like, those random-ass movies we see. Like, mm-hmm. I always like to look up, like, look online and read what people are saying after I see the movie. And if it's not, like, a cut-and-dry, like, thing like you were saying about, like, the ending. Yeah. Like... I don't know, they don't like it. It has to be, like, this way. And they don't like anything. I don't know where I'm going with this. Like, it's got to always just be the same. Like, if it's any different, they're going to say the movie sucks or the ending sucks. If it doesn't follow this same plot or, like, whatever. Or same, like, series of events as they're used to, you know? Yeah, yeah. they don't want anything... Sense? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. They don't want anything different. They want it to be similar. And some mm-hmm. people hate it, some people love it. Um, what franchise do you think would actually be, like, a pretty decent, like, movie or series? Like, I mean, we do, like, The Last of Us, right? I was gonna say like, that, that could be interesting. That, that's almost a movie, like, I th- watching it. I think just me spitballing an idea for what this could be is, I think it could be a good, like, mini-series on, like, a, whatever Sony would license this out to a streaming service, or maybe they'll make their own because everyone's making their own streaming service, but... Imagine, like, a six-episode, like, hour each of just maybe, like, one or two new characters. Or each, it could almost be, like, an anthology. Mm -hmm. And every episode is like, hey, this episode is in Hawaii. And we're just showing you what a survivor in Hawaii has to do. This episode is in Japan. And we're showing you what people in Japan have to do to survive. This episode is in montreal and we're showing you what people like something like that Mm -hmm. like just surviving in these different countries and who knows maybe there's stuff that they could like breadcrumb in there from the last of us part two because we still don't know when that's coming out and then it could be like oh hey that was in that series i watched Mm -hmm. about last of us and now they have i don't know like a new enemy or maybe there's like a gun that they make or i don't know something like that they could even mention like the events that happened in the last of us one like they could be like did you hear about that psycho who shot up the hospital that's some spoilers if you haven't played Last of Us, even though it's came out since like 2012. Yeah. Anything else you want to see that you um, could think of? So many properties, pretty much anything that's like a PlayStation exclusive. I don't know why they put Spyro. I don't think that that's yeah, like Activision. Weird. Like Crash isn't technically like. Plus, I don't know. It's like weird Spyro. It's like a dragon. Spyro could like... be like a cartoon. There was like a yeah. Spyro cartoon, I think, already for Skylanders. So. If they would make a movie or show, it would be more in chord to what the original series was, like the remaster. You know what I mean? Like Skylanders was its own thing. Yeah, but they would have to like not change like Metal Gear is an even a uh, Sony franchise. That's a weird one to say. I feel like they would like butcher it. Like they'd make it try to be like those trendy kids. God cartoons. of War. God of War would be weird. I feel like I could see it though. I could see like a God of War like movie. Like someone playing Kratos, 
the question is do you get the old kratos or you get the kratos now which is old kratos <laughs> <laughs> well maybe the newer one because if people are playing the new game they'd recognize him more you know yeah but it's interesting like i could i could see maybe making a movie about what the old games were where he was the one in the like roman or greek like mythology or like... yeah and kind of explaining what those games were to a newer audience i think you can get all the old god of wars on your playstation 4 but like there is some like story elements in 4 or the newest one with atreus that go back to his old franchise because it was a completely different game the character was like completely different are you looking at your sunburn yes we got very burnt. We're white, and we don't go outside very often because we're gamers here. <laughs> Let's move on. Speaking of Sony, uh, there was this is coming from IGN. There were some reports about the PlayStation Five or whatever the next PlayStation mm -hmm. is called, and they showed off some loading time demos. Is that ooh, ooh. exciting? Uh, this is an article from IGN again. A new video posted by Wall Street Journal's Takashi Muchizuki may have given us our first look at potential power of PlayStation 5. Muchizuki, Mochizuki, that's how you say that, tweeted out the video saying this was Sony's official video comparing performance of PS4 Pro versus next-gen PlayStation. The video compares the loading times and performance of Marvel Spider-Man between a PS4 Pro and potentially named ps5 and it's nearly identical to the description given in wired's interview with ps5 lead art architect mark kearney that revealed the first details of the next gen playstation let's actually see if we can watch this here it we can might just have get sound. it oh you're right it'll be loud. let's see let's see if it even loads let's go to twitter hopefully that one doesn't load you have two videos yeah i know oh that's great it's just not the first thing i always thought that nope, he should have went it. to videos if you go back i think if you click the tweet like if you click like this part oh 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 i don't know just like twitter here we can there it is there we it can is. find it that's not a video that's oh. just a picture oh you're right live kerfuffles yep you gotta will this load I mean, I kind of heard the story. Like, it is quicker. It's like a, a noticeable difference. Please, internet, just load. <laughs> Dead air. Okay. It was like, you know, how do I put this? Like a sub substantial difference of a, a piece of hardware spec that you wouldn't necessarily notice because it's just a load screen but from what i understand the playstation 4 spider pro spider-man's loading time was about like 15 seconds and on the reportedly ps5 it's like one second whoa or two seconds so it wow. is a big difference just in terms of loading but that's a weird thing to even show because the way that i look at it it's like bro the PS or Spider Man for the PS4 was made in 2018 after the PS4 has been out for five years. Let the PS5 be out for five years and then let's look at the games and see if the loading time is still going to be that True. quick. Because game developers are always pushing the next level. It's like new. Like, it's like, brand new. Yeah. The games that are going to come out on the PS5 at launch are going to look nice and be like kind of powerful, but they're not going to push the limits of the hardware that always yeah. happens later in the gen so that's all i'm gonna say on that yes i'm excited there's gonna be that. a ps5 i don't think they're gonna talk about it this year i think it's gonna come next year i think the co new consoles come out next year 2020 didn't sony say they weren't even gonna do anything at they're not year? doing anything this year no which makes me sad yeah they're probably sad. gonna have their own little video thing but i always love i love watching the press conferences and i get why people don't want to do press conferences it's more expensive because they have to rent out the venue and sometimes do performances like last year sony did performances on stage and not people a lot of people liked it so they're like hey you know what we're gonna do our own thing but i i enjoy watching the live thing like i think it's fun so they're not having a press conference or they're just not announcing anything they're both like That's they're depressing. not they they're can't not even tweet. they're not gonna talk about anything and they're not having a press conference they're literally not even gonna be at e3 
like the convention. They're wow. not at E3 at all. So I don't know what they're going to do. Who knows? Maybe a week before, a week after E3, though, they could upload a little video. Like, you know what a Nintendo Direct is? Like, they almost yeah. show off a bunch of games at once. They've been doing those now. It's called the Sony State of Play. Okay. And the last one was pretty uh, sub- substantial. And it showed off gameplay for that Final Fantasy VII remake, which everyone is uh, creaming their pants over. So I think they will probably so. do another one of those. When it comes out, I don't know. We're going to move on, though. they'll do one for Last Go of ahead. Us 2? They'll probably have something about Last of Us 2 in one. Okay. And they probably won't... They might announce if it's in there or not. But they didn't say, hey... There's going to be Final Fantasy VII to remake gameplay in this last one. Okay. Square was uh, teasing it, but they didn't notably go out there and say, like, hey, watch this. There's going to be gameplay of Final Fantasy VII. New gameplay. Uh, but that's cool, and new consoles are cool. I'm sure there'll be a lot about that. Hey, speaking about Sony, this one blew my mind. This actually made me, like, go crazy, and I thought of that, like, great quote from Ghostbusters where Bill Murray's, like, Cats and dogs living together, mass hy- mass hysteria. This article reads, it's from IGN, Sony Microsoft partnering to improve cloud gaming streaming wow. platforms. That's right. They're Sony actually have a partnering together. Yes, especially with Microsoft. Yeah. Today, Sony and Microsoft announced a partnership to focus on improving cloud gaming, AI solutions, and more. The two tech giants signed a mor- memorandum. Is that how you say that? Memorandum. 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 That's Memorandum. probably right. Understanding that established both companies will explore joint development of future cloud solutions in Microsoft Azure to support their represent re, rep, respective games. Excuse me. And content streaming service, Microsoft Azure is, I think, the code name for whatever the next Xbox is. They will also explore the use of current Microsoft Azure data center based solutions for sony games and content streaming services noting that these efforts will include building better development platforms for the content creator community the partnership will also explore collaboration in the areas of semiconductors and ai the companies intend to integrate sony image sensors with microsoft's azure ai tech across cloud and edge and leverage sony's semiconductors and microsoft's cloud technology for many years, Microsoft has been a key part- business partner for us. Though, of course, the two companies have also been competing in some areas, said President and CEO of Sony, <laughs> Kenjiri Yoshida. I believe that our joint development of cloud, of future cloud solutions will contribute greatly to the advancement of interactive content. Additionally, I hope that in the areas of semiconductors and AI, leveraging each company's cutting-edge technology in a mutually complementary way will lead to the creation of new value for society sony has also always been a leader in both entertainment and technology and the collaboration we announced today builds on this history of innovation said microsoft ceo sat satya nadella yeah our partnership brings the power of azure and azure ai to sony to deliver new gaming and entertainment experiences for customers uh that's pretty much all the article yeah that's Sony and yeah. Microsoft, like, who would have thought that? Yeah, this world's they, getting crazy. Sony was like, I'm not gonna allow crossplay on my. I thought console. it was crazy when Microsoft is like, yeah, we love Nintendo, we're gonna work with Nintendo, and then we get cool shit like Cuphead on the Switch. Yes. But now we're here, and like, who knows what this could mean? Like, I think exclusives will always be a thing, but why don't they just all like form like that would be cool? Thing Wouldn't and... it be a monopoly then? Yeah. Like, if they all just had one True. box. Like, that's the dream. But then uh, PC but yeah, players right. would be but like, then... actually, uh, that's <laughs> PC. Just everyone playing. But, but, um, yeah, you're right, too. Also, the price could go up. Because you're right, it could be in a monopoly. I mean, have no other choice. Yeah. Uh, the more I read this, I don't think Microsoft Azure is the next console. I think it's, like, some sort of... It might be, like, Microsoft's, like, gaming studio or something. I don't know. Or Maybe. their platform or their... Whatever it's called. But I'm interested to see what where this like goes. What if it's, like, could be that um i'm personally not that into the idea of cloud gaming that's like, I don't like streaming that. yeah i don't like that it's almost like netflix but with games mm-hmm. and i'm personally not into that but no because then you like this is gonna sound conspiracy af but then you like don't actually own it like i don't know it's just there 
Yeah. That's why I don't like the digital games. Yeah. I I don't buy a lot of digital games. I usually buy physical. What's stopping Microsoft from taking it back? Not even that, but the studio could close or something could happen to the studio. Like Telltale went under and I don't think you can buy any of the Telltale games anymore or something like that. Mm -hmm. Unless they're like, you go out and buy a disc, obviously, but... Yeah, I'm interest. I can't believe Microsoft and Sony partnered. That's who would have thought of that. I would have never woke up and thought I saw that they're actually mm-hmm. partnering together to work on stuff. That's crazy. Uh, speaking of Microsoft, hey, there's a new Minecraft game coming out. Would have thunk it. I actually did announce a new Minecraft game a couple, a little while ago too, not including this one. But Minecraft Earth is Minecraft plus Pokemon Go. We should watch this trailer live as well because I have never seen the trailer for this game. Let's read about it first. This is coming from IGN. Mojang and Mojang, let's say you say it. Oh, really? Yeah. And Minecraft have announced, or Microsoft have announced Minecraft Earth, an augmented reality mobile game that combines elements of Minecraft and games like Pokemon Go. Revealed on the official Minecraft website, Minecraft Earth allows players to collect, explore, collaborate, and survive while exploring and building new Minecraft creations in the real world. Like in the original Minecraft, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary, Minecraft Earth features old and new mobs, and over time, players will discover new variants they can use to populate their buildings. For example, you can find Minecraft pigs just hanging out in your neighborhood park. Players can also explore their neighborhood to find blocks they use any flat surface to build on. Using building plates, players can team up with friends to create and place them in the Real world to explore at life size and leave for others to see. Players can craft new items, breed mobs, grow crops, and more. However, players will also encounter hostile mobs out in Minecraft out in Minecraft Earth that they'll have to fight off. It's unclear at the time exactly how Minecraft intends to moderate content put out into the AR in this AR world. Yeah, they don't know how they're gonna not have, you know, penises and swastikas and who knows what else. What, like, what people make? Yeah, they don't know how to moderate that. Let's get the sound off. Let's full screen this, John. Is it? Is this? Oh, I thought this was... This is the trailer. It's a child walking around. We're getting an ad for Minecraft on the Vita. Wow. It's loading because our internet's bad. Oh, it had to go to 4K HD on my phone. Whoa. Okay, so she built, like, some sort of tree house, fire house. Now she's a skater girl. It says here... There's some trees and blocks on what look to be Mushrooms. iPhone screens or just phone screens. Some chicks. Chickens. Is that a thing chickens do? They like move their head like I that? I don't know. Yep, she's making a little world on her in a diner. She's skating. There's like an octopus. There's a, a balloon all made of Minecraft. Oh, uh, that would be diner. more scary at night. Uh, I forgot Llama. they added llamas. She's skating through the streets. Oh, diamond. That's a lot of diamond. There'd nowhere well, be that much is there diamond. A creeper? That was just TNT. Yeah, but they gotta show a creeper. Lens flare. You gotta have that in your trailer. Wow. There's an okay looking castle and some twins being like, yo, what up, girl? All right, she moved in. Her dad's saying something to her. Probably like, did you find something she's cool? She's probably like, he's probably like, do you like the neighborhood? Yeah. Oh, look, she got a Disney tower with some. Fireworks. They didn't even show a Minecraft your world. Minecraft, Minecraft Earth. Download now and put your credit card info. <laughs> I honestly didn't learn anything from that. Either. Like, what is the game? I, what I, do you do? You just, like, because the thing I liked about Minecraft is, like, I don't know, you could do so much and you could, like, explore so much, but that's just, oh, like, no. kind of, con- what? I just deleted one of the news <gasps> you can, articles. You can open old tab. Oh, really? I think if you go here, it's history, right? Uh, or, sh- it should be. I don't know, but um, I thought there was a. Yes, I found okay. it. We're good. Okay, good. Um, Keep talking about Minecraft. Yeah. World. <laughs> Without like, I don't know. How do you gather? Is the stuff just in the environment? I assume it just randomly would spawn, almost like Pokemon Go. And so maybe how long it, would it like, take you to get wood? Oh no, that's a good point. You need wood to start to make stuff so you can get Well, stone. it's gonna I think it's like Pokemon Go where you don't necessarily even need to like build a house. That's just something you can do like in your neighborhood or like at your actual house. But then house. what do you do? I you collect resources and fight mobs. It'll probably be like Pokemon Go where there's like towers that you go to and there's like 
a clan like you pick like valor or, you know all ar games are kind of the same like they need to evolve maybe this one will be different but i, I honestly mean, i would get it i put this article out it'll probably be free but like i wish ar games would do something different because i don't want ar games to go away but i feel like every ar game is just like a pokemon go like true clone. like i want them to be something more because i think ar is a cool series in general it is or game type in general uh, hey, uh, kids love that Minecraft. You know what else kids love? Call of Fortnite. Duty. No, Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do actually like Fortnite. I thought more it was now. dying. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, an article from IGN again. 2020 Call of Duty will reportedly now be Black Ops 5 due to alleged development shift. According to a report from Kotaku, Activision has informed developers at Sledgehammer Games and Raven that both studios will no longer be in charge of the Call of Duty game scheduled for 2020. Instead, Treyarch, who last developed 2018's Black Ops 4, will reportedly be taking over and leading development of a new Black Ops game for next year, Black Ops 5. Raven and Sledgehammer were originally supposed to lead the development of 2020's Call of Duty, and according to Kotaku, the plan was set its story mode during the Cold War. Conveniently enough, Kotaku reports that Treyarch is also getting setting its story mode for Black Ops 5 during the Cold War. That could be cool, like Black Ops 1. According to Kotaku's Jason Schreier, who cites sources briefed on the overhaul while Treyarch will take over a leadership role in the 2020 Call of Duty, Raven and Sledgehammer will act as support studios. Treyarch will be utilizing work previously done on a single-player story mode for the campaign. It's first time since 2012 that Activision has broken its three-year studio rotation, beginning with Treyarch's Black Ops 2, Infinity Ward's Call of Duty Ghost, and Sledgehammer's Advanced Warfare. Treyarch has helmed all of Black Ops games since the series' inception. Raven has traditionally acted as a support studio to each leading team. One main reason behind the studio switch is reportedly due to significant tensions between employees from Raven and Sledgehammer. The sources indicated that both staffs argued frequently over the past year. Uh, according to Kotaku, reactions over at Treyarch are quite mixed between dismay and excitement. Instead of a three-year schedule, Treyarch will now have two years to make Black Ops 5, and Kotaku's sources say it may result in a particularly bad stretch of crunch. Other sources say that they're excited because their game plan for Black Ops 5 likely won't change as drastically as it did for previous installments. Alright, so let's talk about why this is an issue. Number one, you need to have the... You can't just push this onto a studio where they're used to this three-year cycle for mm -hmm. those of you who don't know about call of duty since like it said in the article since 2012 they've been running a three-year change which yeah. basically means each studio gets three years to work on a game so it's treyarch infinity ward sledgehammer treyarch infinity ward sledgehammer so the fact that now treyarch activision's like oh hey treyarch you gotta make a new game right now and i agree with what the article said there's probably going to be mad crunch trying to get this game out there. Yeah, and there might be, be shit. Yeah, and there'll probably be a lot of features cut because of that. Or who knows, maybe they'll be put into the game, but you'll have to get them through other means, a.k.a. your wallet. True. Um, I, could, I could see that. And Especially with games like Fortnite competing. Right. Yes. Call of Duty is definitely... It's... It's doing well, but it's not doing as well as it has been over the past couple of years. It still strides, but it's definitely been dying out. Yeah. And I just wanted to point out just how bad, like, Crunch is. Like, this is just a bad thing in general. We don't want these game devs to have to just waste hundreds of hours mm -hmm. on a week working on the games. They, got lives. they literally don't get lives. It makes me upset now to see yeah. development babies or whatever. Because What's that? That at but the they, end of games, they'll have credits for all the babies that were born, and it just sometimes will make me think like, well, were they even there to like raise their kid because they had to work all the time on this true, game to that get it is out? Sad. So, yeah, I'm, I, I honestly really don't care that much about the Call of Duty series anymore. I always have some eyes on it because it's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Like in the back in the day, I was really into Call of Duty, but. <laughs> Yeah, you're always like, Megan, <laughs> don't let me buy this. I didn't buy Call Black Ops 4, all right? And then it would come out. I don't out, think I will, because I've seen it on sale many times. And I'll be like, Corey. Didn't that only happen are twice? Are you sure you want to buy that? World yeah, War II. Yeah, years. And what was the one before that? Infinite Warfare. 
That one was really I'm like, bad. I'm sure you want to buy that. And you're World like, War yeah. Two wasn't bad, except I did break a controller playing it, so Ooh. that's bad. That is bad. It, yeah, it just it sucks that this they're getting rushed and the employees themselves are even mixed about it. Like some people are like, oh, that's cool, but then the other people are like, are you kidding me? Like already? Yeah, I don't blame them. Like they're probably still working on a lot of shit about Black Ops Four. Like that's crazy. Why'd they change the name? What do you mean? Didn't you say that they changed the name? Um, of Black Ops 4 or 2020's Call of Duty? Yeah. It says it should just be Black Ops 5. Yeah, why? it'll well, just I... be its own thing. So it's, it like... Let me put it this way. I, I'll just say this, and I don't know if this will answer your question, but I feel like Activision has just put their most popular Call of Duties, just have named their new games that... So Black Ops 4 has some connection to the Black Ops overall series, but it's kind of its own thing. Black yeah, Ops like 5, just using the name? Black o- yeah, Black Ops 5 will be its own thing, but it almost just has Black Ops in the title because people see that. It's almost like the thing we were talking about movies. Where they're like, oh, Fallout 76. I know Black Ops. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I know they Black just Ops. The I'll play Black Ops again. I'll get a new Black Ops, but it could be completely different. Yeah. Um, That's what I was asking because like, did they have a name and they changed it or was it we don't, well we don't know yet that okay. that information okay. could come out like considering it said it was they're almost taking the idea from sledgehammer games that was set in uh the cold war i could assume it probably had a different name maybe it's just called call of duty cold war because the last mm-hmm. sledgehammer game was just called world war Two or ww2 so it could have just been called something as simple as that because they don't want to throw people off with weird names. A lot of people didn't like Call of Duty Ghosts and that had a weird name of just Ghosts. Ghosts. But it just sucks seeing that. I Hopefully the game will be good, but just I can't believe they would just be like, no. Like I, it, yeah. it makes me curious to know what Sledgehammer is going to be doing. Like, Are they working on their own game? Are they making something different? Activision's kind of a mess right now. Like, I feel like all they're making is you really Call would... of Duty bring other people in from those other studios to help or you think it would Uh, just be like yeah they could probably not infinity ward because their their game will be coming out this year whatever the new call of duty is that they're making i think it's rumored to be modern warfare 4 but it said that raven will help them raven and sledgehammer work together raven's like a support group for most of the call of duties okay and i mean the th- at the end of the day the thing for most call of duty games is they don't require as much work because they're almost all like running in the same engine they just look different like yeah, they kind of edit it true so i know it i'm not trying to say like video game development's easy but it could be easier because yeah they don't have as much to do with the call of duty game just kind of edit some things here and there at least that's what i interpret but that could be completely false uh let's move along uh i don't have a good segue to this because i don't know how to connect them but hey there was a super mario maker 2 direct you ever hear that mario mario guy (laughs) uh is that the uh the electrician oh yeah yeah yeah. he does everyone's uh cable and he'll wall mount your tv (laughs) he'll set up speakers from his cousin uh, wario yeah he's got his shit together yeah he does uh this comes from ign super mario maker 2 features story mode online multiplayer and co-op creation mode there was a direct um oh geez i want to say it was it was on the 15th here of may so it was about a week ago Super Mario Maker 2, and they pretty much revealed everything about the game in the Direct. Super Mario Maker 2 will feature a brand new story mode and a co-op creation mode that will allow two players to build levels together. Revealed in a 15-minute Nintendo Direct, Super Mario Maker 2 will also feature online multiplayer with up to four players. It's Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Toadette. No Bowsette for you uh, Luigis (laughs) out there. Players will be able to play alongside their friends in multiplayer co-op mode where all will work together and when one player reaches the finish line, all will finish and beat the level. However, multiplayer versus mode will allow will also be available and will pit four players against each other on randomly selected courses and will encourage players to get better as a versus rating will be keep track of your wins and your losses. Nearby Play will allow up to four players who own a Nintendo Switch and Super Mario Maker 2 to play local co-op. One caveat is that the player who sets up the room will need an internet connection. I think that's pretty neat. I believe it's saying that you only need one copy of Super Mario Maker 
and other people can play with you and that's pretty cool cool. they used to do that on the ds like if you had one copy of mario kart people could play mario kart with you the single player story mode will task mario with rebuilding princess princess peach's castle completing jobs and mastering over a a hundred courses to earn to each coin to earn coins to help in your rebuilding mission Level Creator will have many more tools at their disposal, including adding slopes, angry sun, snake blot, block, on, off, switch, <laughs> the ability to set the water and or lava, lava level of a stage, and so much more. If anyone just heard me speaking these things, they'd be like, this guy's insane. Like, send him to the insane ward. Like, what is he talking about? Snake block, angry sun? For players who wish to add some Not scrolling, the happy sun, the angry sun. yes, add some scrolling to their levels. The custom scroll will allow creators to decide when and where to start a scroll, adjust its speed and trajectory, and even create vertical scroll sections. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else notable here before we just start talking about this. Uh, Super Mario World 3D style will also be available for the first time. It will feature certain things not available in other styles like clear pipes, warp boxes, crates, Koopa Troopa cars, track blocks, piranha creepers, and the ability to become Cat Mario and climb up sections of the course. Cat Um, Mario? Yeah, Cat Mario was actually a thing in Super Mario 3D Land or 3D World where, yeah, he he gets a cute little cat suit. There's actually a picture you can see here. There's like Luigi as Cat Luigi, Aww. Mario's as Yellow, and all the characters will get one. So Pete or Toad and Toadette. Oh, there's probably going to be some interesting drawings of that. Oh, um, there already has been. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Maker Two will be released on Nintendo Switch on June twenty eighth, twenty nineteen, and those who have Switch Online account will be able to purchase a set of two Nintendo Switch game vouchers, which will allow them to redeem the vouchers for two digital titles on the Nintendo eShop. So that's a nice feature. The pair of vouchers cost $9.99 USD, meaning you can buy two games, including Super Mario Maker, if you so desire, and another full price title and save 20 bucks. So nice. this is how it works. And this is for all digital. Starting with this, Super Mario Maker 2, and any Nintendo first party game, you go online and you can pick two fully priced games. So the games that they... I had an example for this in the Direct where Mario Maker 2 and Smash Brothers Ultimate. And you can buy them both for $100, so you save $10 on each. But it's any first party game. So they had Breath of the Wild there, they had Mario Odyssey, they had Splatoon 2, they had Xenoblade Chronicles 2, etc. So that's a pretty cool... That's not Mm -hmm. related to Super Mario Maker, but that's neat that that's a feature that they're adding. Especially because the online really doesn't have a lot of benefits as it is right now. But... True. Let's talk about the notes here to talk about. So they actually didn't have four play. They didn't. I don't think they really had any versus mode in Super Mario Maker One. It was mostly just about you completing it. So the fact that there's multiplayer is kind of a big deal. Uh, it's pretty neat to also see like Luigi, Toad, and Toadette recreated in all these uh, styles. So how it works is basically it's just Mario, but in any style you want. So if you see some of these pictures here, you know, it's just Mario from Super Mario World Mm -hmm. or Super Mario 1 or Super Mario World. That's World again, but that's the 3D World. There's Cat Mario. There's a little picture of him. Let's see here. That's kind of what the gist is of this game. You probably never saw it, but you literally make your Mario levels. Like, you have Mm -hmm. everything. It's almost like Minecraft. I never played, like, the first one. It's fun. It's really fun, yeah. I didn't put enough hours into it, but I think with the Switch, I'll definitely want to play it more. See, like Super Mario 3, Mm -hmm. and there's the Angry Sun. But you can, like, change (laughs) all your, like, everything. Like, everything's customizable. It's really neat. Yeah, I know. It reminds me of, um, what game did I play where you, like, created levels? I don't know. I think it might have been, like, I don't know. Oh, I know what you mean. I can't think of it I can't either. I'm trying to think really hard. Oh, you know what it was? It was the Freddy Fish games. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not what I was thinking of, but okay. Like, I think there was a a specific disc where you could, like, make mazes and, like, go through the mazes. But yeah, multiplayer is cool. Mm -hmm. I think that could be fun. And, like, I think it just makes sense because, you know, the Switch is the thing where you, like, would put it somewhere and you give the other player the controller so you can play together. Yeah, I fun. think, again, going with that logic, it's good they added the story mode. Because Super Mario Maker, it is a lot of stuff is online. 
So it's nice that they have something you can do offline because you travel with the Switch and usually, you know, you're not connected all the time. Mm -hmm. You can also download stages to your Switch, which is cool. Like you can pick the pe what stuff that people made and uh, just download it to your Switch. So it's just like local wireless, like. What do you mean? Or you don't need two Switches. You just need. For what? Multiplayer? For, yeah. When, uh, you could do it with two Switches, but I'm just saying if you want to do co-op. Okay. You could just each have a controller, like mm -hmm. the thing about the Switch. Um, and then something I thought that was neat is there actually a better search engine for when you want to search for stages on Super Mario uh, Maker 2. So there's like different genres of stages. Like some that were, sounds fun. Some were just about like... A little bit run, of everything. Running like an auto Mario where cool shit would happen around you and you don't play... But then there's other ones that are like speed running. There are other ones that are for just multiplayer stages. That was one that they showed. That's pretty cool. So I think cool. that you I get, think it's cool. You get to pick like how you're feeling that day. Like you can play certain. Yeah, games. yeah, and of course you can look like if you have a certain user you like, and you're like, oh, I want to see more mm -hmm. stages from Marshmallow Twenty Eight or something <laughs> like that. Um, we're gonna move on to our last story here. I don't have a good segue for this one either. Can you think of one? Mario, Nintendo um, to this. Uh, not really. Yeah, you no. can't think of anything. Uh, this is from Polygon. Overwatch Anniversary 2019 event goes live, and here are all the skins. I have nothing to read about this. I think it should be self-explanatory. We're just going to... I thought it'd be, all of them. I thought it'd be yeah, fun to cool. just uh, look at all the skins and critique them. Isn't this is what I'm trying to do. Wait, is it full screen now? Are we good? I think that just zooms it in so yeah, i think we're gonna have to keep it here but yeah here's the may uh, i like how they put this i don't know what stage this That's, uh, um <sighs> Li Jong tower okay it's like a bubble to you almost it's i one assume of them. it's the capture the so, flag so the may skin this is a legendary I mean, not capture the flag a control point this is the legendary skin but she's like ice cream may and it looks pretty good i like it i think it's might honestly be one of my favorite ones of the event. Um, beehive or bee beekeeper. You don't like it that much? No, I, I do. I just love beekeeper. Okay, me. okay. It's like green. You could look these up if you want to see them. Uh, this, is, this next one's a somber skin. That. This is an epic. So it's just a recolor. I, I just like the yellow. Oh, I want to zoom in on it a little more. It's cool. I like the stuff around her face. Yeah, I don't know too. if she normally has that. I like the like mascara or whatever you call that. The black around her eyes. It looks cool. I like it. It's neat. Mm -hmm. This is next one is Brigitte. Oh. This is a legendary. She is like a SWAT like police. Is that police in yeah. whatever language she is? I forget. Swedish. I think it's cool. I like it. I do not like I Brigitte, enjoy... and I do not like that skin. I like it. It's I think so it's basic. Neat. It's like here's like. Black I like it more. Blue. I like it more than the one that was the last anniversary where she has the bear. You know what I mean? Yeah, She's like blonde I was and has the by bear. That. Also, her shield looks cool. They don't have the shield here, but it looked neat. Uh, why are you triggered by it? The because bear she one. just came oh, out. Oh, yeah. And she got a skin. Here's another epic. This is Farah. It looks like carbon fiber. Like, remember the carbon mm -hmm. fiber zen? It's, it's cool. like all black and red. Yeah, it looks cool. Not much to say I about like it. I like the epics, honestly. I like this one. Ooh. Here's Roadhog. Oh. Come on, zoom in. You have to click there. There you go. So, I like that. He's almost like a hazmat. Is it like radioactive or something? Yeah. I like he's it. like in a suit and then his head is like a helmet in like liquid and it's like a skull warthog or like pig thing. It looks really neat. It, honestly, the best way I could describe it is it almost reminds me of the character Caustic in Apex Legends mixed with like something else. Like he has like gas and like a hazmat thing. Uh, mm -hmm. good colors reminds me of like Halloween honestly like oranges blacks yeah, dark belly green looks like a pumpkin yeah it's like a valve though or like a yeah it, it's like cool a, I like that yeah. one next I one really is like Winston one. he is a gargoyle uh, he's pretty much all like gray and dark and he has like red undertones orange and red he's really cool he looks really like cool that. I like that it's probably my favorite Winston skin Next we have, this is a legendary diva skin, also like carbon fibery, like mm -hmm. pink, and not much to say about that. It's no, just a recolor. kind of the same. Another, a Doomfist, uh, there's an epic skin, just a recolor. Like you that. can see his eyes are like white, and he has the stuff on, mm -hmm. like almost like the last airbender, like 
head stuff. Again, carbon fiber. I don't know why they made those, but whatever. Uh, this is a legendary. This is Farah. She's like a space cadet. It's pretty pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I like it. I always like seeing Farah ones. This almost reminds me of like a Halo helmet. Yeah. Next, we have that the legendary adorable. diva where she's like a schoolgirl with like almost like a Gundam mech. I think it's cool. It's probably my second favorite skin. Uh, and then we got. This is actually a legendary one, and I don't really know what's different about this one. Um, her hair, maybe? I don't know. Her hair is blue. It's Widowmaker. She's just, like, white and blue. It almost reminds me of the Summer Games Widow recolor, where it's like this, but it has red, blue, and green, yeah. I think. So that's why I didn't say I don't really know much. These are just new sprays that we're looking at now. The cards for Ash, the card for Baptiste. Not really much to say. That's pretty much it. And the card for Wrecking Ball. They did show the dances off for them in the trailer, but we don't have the trailer here. But... Minor news, but it's cool that, uh, you know, I always like to critique the I, Overwatch skins. I like skins. those skins more than the summer, or the, um, What was the last event? The Black Watch Retribution yeah, thing? Yeah, I did not like those skins. I can't even think of any that were notable, so. See, that's the bad thing about drinking all these beers, is you gotta empty out the bladder every once in a while. <laughs> I just had to use the bathroom, so inside baseball we had to do a cut. Let me just tell you, before we get on this next segment, something that I hate. That's bullshit. My pants, my shorts I'm wearing right now, the fly is three buttons. Who thought that was a good idea? Like, even fashionably wise, I'm not, like, strutting this around like, hey, everyone, look at my three button fly. Like, <laughs> that's stupid. That's bad. Uh, what's it called? What's the term for, like, creating, like, clothes? Is there a term for I that? Don't know. Tailoring? Tailory. Yeah, know, sure, we'll go with that. Like, well, at least your pants have pockets. Well, what do you need to carry in your pockets? I've got to carry my, my wallet and my phone. I'm a big, important man. <laughs> you got your purse. Yep, that's their plan. They got to make, make women buy purses. We are so, like, low energy because it's just so relaxing. <laughs> oh, my God, I have, like, three mosquito... I have so many mosquito bites on my feet oh I just man noticed that. i actually haven't got any mosquito bites i've gotten a lot of red though i'm looking like a lobster not yeah. that bad though uh but sunburn sucks put sunscreen on i just hate applying it let's move on to the second segment of the podcast watch read play where we're going to talk about anything that we watch read or play megan <laughs> take us away um uh, I've kind of just been playing some Overwatch lately. Like I said, I've been pretty busy, so I haven't really got to play a lot of stuff. We were playing Cuphead. Um, Cuphead oh, and Overwatch. Hopefully we can play some more of that while we're down here. Yeah, One of these nights. Try to beat that genie or the clown. <sighs> we're only on World 2. Yeah, I know. Not saying we're bad, we just haven't played it in a while. No, nah, I'm bad. It's hard. It's a hard <laughs> game, though. I'm not yeah. trying to, like, say that for you laugh, because I'm not trying to be like, you are bad. It's hard. I don't even know if I could do it myself, even though it is easier. easier. Oh, shit. There's a coyote right there. Where? Is that a fox? Where? You see it? Just went in the no. bush. Oh, I see him over there. Oh, my God. That, I think that's a fox. Okay. A small one. Live nature. That's oh the second gosh. time we did that. Remember those, the lizard? I know. You almost said gator. Gator. I was going to say gecko. Oh. Yeah, we literally have like all these windows. I think I said that at the beginning of the podcast. Like if people would come by, they'd see my microphone and be like, oh, look, they're doing some professional shit yep. in there. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> so is Cuphead and Overwatch really? Yeah. Any two cents you want to say about Overwatch? You've been playing Overwatch for a while. Like when yeah. did you get over? I bought you Overwatch. Yeah. Didn't I? For anniversary. Um. Two years ago, right? Yeah. That'd be 2017. Yeah, yeah, you got into like a year later because you'd play on my computer. Yeah, and I was ass, and I still am ass on the PC, but on PS4 it's like easier. Got that Moira. Yeah, I love Moira. Moira's she great. She doesn't get enough love. That's why no. I was saying I was triggered when Brig Brigitte got a um got a skin like shortly after her freaking thing, and it took Moira like four events to even get a skin. They did got. that with Baptiste too. They yeah. gave him that oh, new there, one. There he is again. They gave him that new. I can't see him. They gave him the new one. Oh, oh, see it? It's just chilling. It's just walking in the street. It's a fox. Oh my god, that's so cute. No, I can't see it. She's gonna take a picture because. No, I can't see it, but I'm 
that's what we do when we see when we see things we're not used to. Yeah, I can't see it. He's just standing in the street there. Oh, he's chilling. Whatever. He's so cute. You don't see him? See him now? Oh yeah, now I see him. Yeah, it's a fox. <laughs> that's cute. I thought it was a coyote. Yeah. For some reason we did see a coyote here last year. Yeah, but yeah, I was triggered because my girl Moira doesn't get enough love, and she's cool AF. And Brigitte's just like, I Moira is have cool, a shield. and she's a lot of fun to play. Yeah. yeah, no one likes Brigitte. She like ruined the game. Yeah, no, you know who did <laughs> freaking wrecking ball? No one likes wrecking ball. At least some people like Brigitte. People just like Brigitte at first because they're like, yeah, she hot. And then there was that thing where she was like searched on Pornhub or something. I think this would be a good time to just talk about how I think like, I don't know what Overwatch needs to do, but they need to do something to fix the game to make more people want to like continue to play Yeah, it. not only cater to the pros. That's but, what they do. Because here's the thing, like I'm not saying Overwatch is dead, but I feel like I a lot less people I know like still play it. And I know that they have a great... Uh, what's it called esports league mm -hmm. everyone and their mother loves ow but i don't know they need to do something that makes me want to actually play overwatch again i did tweet i think these skins that are coming out look cool i'd like to play again but i don't know if that's necessarily true because i have a very limited time and also i don't want to get back in that pool of trying to adjust like i'd have to play a couple matches to actually get my feet wet again and learn how to play plus it's it's hard. The thing about Overwatch is there are a lot of people who have just been playing since launch, and they're gods. Yeah, so it's hard they to make just, Smurfs. Yeah, it's hard to just jump back in and play and just have fun because all the Smurfs, like, they're just going to go in there, and they're going to play their best character, and it's just, yeah, it's, it sucks, man. Like, I wish they need to find a way to, like, make it easier for newer players or players who want to get back in there. Like, I don't know what to do. It's hard, especially with ongoing games like this. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, any, any movies or anything you've been reading you want to talk about? Um, I mean, we did just watch The Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That was. That I have that on my list here. Yeah, I um, like that. I never watched that. Um, really didn't hear that much about it. Like, I feel like you mentioned it a couple of years ago, and I'm like, I think I've seen that cover because it's a yeah, very I iconic it cover. One of your there, friends watched it, right? Well. When I was like talking about that one that was goss or goss cosplaying, mm -hmm. um, at Anime Next when me and Rachel went, that was um in twenty fourteen. No, okay. no, the first year I went was twenty fourteen. Rachel came with me for the first time in twenty fifteen. Okay, and that's when we met that guy. That was cosplaying Duke. And I wanted to watch it then because she like she knew who, where it was from and I didn't and she like told me. Was he role playing him? Yeah, oh, that's he was. Good. It that's was really good. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was. It was great. Johnny killed it. Yeah, he did. He's probably the best part of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is based on a book, but he did a good job just saying the lines and the monologues. It's it's a funny movie. I I also recommend it. Anything else you want to say about it? No, not really. It's like it's kind of one of those movies that you just watch. It's a cult classic. Yeah, to like pass time. Like I don't know. That's not a bad thing. It's not a movie that's like a like deep like movie. You know what I mean? Like some you really think about. This one is just you kind of watch just for entertainment. It's a contained adventure. Uh huh. Yeah. It's not something that they're like, oh, we should bring it back. Like. It, it is based on a book, and it's just a contained thing. Yeah. It is not, yeah, like, don't look anything into it. Like, it's just kind of one note, but in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Anything else? Um, I mean, I finished that show I was watching on Netflix, The Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, the one that has, like, the musical numbers. Do you want, it's pretty good. You can talk about it if you want. You can talk about um, anything you want to talk about, any of those shows. You can talk about the one with that the woman uh, gypsy or whatever oh yeah i forgot Talk about, about that. that um yeah well crazy ex-girlfriend like i kind of just like put it on like started watching it because i knew it had like musical stuff in it and i like that and i liked it a lot um around like the like last season and stuff like in second to last season um 
it kind of just seemed to be dragging a little bit. Like, it's like, okay, come on. But it was, like, entertaining. Uh, I watched The Act, which is about, like, Gypsy Rose and her mom. Yeah, it was a famous story. Yeah, it just happened, like, four years ago in 2015. Um, She, like, had her mom killed. And her mom, like, faked that she was, like, sick and had, like, leukemia and epilepsy and couldn't walk. It's crazy stuff, yeah. And I know it's, like, dramatization. Like, it's not moment per moment like this is exactly what happened but the major things like that do happen it's like oh my god how is this like happening in this world it makes you feel bad like for people that have to go through this yeah it's messed up that she took advantage of all those systems because it's Mm kind of sad but when you think about it like people are the reason a lot of this stuff gets taken away like at enough if enough people did what her mom did and took all these benefits, that there wouldn't be these benefits for people who actually need yeah. them. So, yeah, that's, you know, not cool. Like, mm-hmm. I can't believe anyone would just do something like that and just not think twice or not think about the repercussions. But, I don't know, maybe that's just the human way. Sometimes we don't think. Yeah. It's sad and, and I don't know, it's just messed up. It seemed like a good show. I yeah, it was Catch good. Catch glimpses it was good. of it, but um, the actors seem to do a good job portraying the characters' yeah. pre- insanity. I mean, at first, them. like, I felt, like, bad for Gypsy, but then, like, in the later episodes, again, I don't know if this is exact, exactly how it played out, but it's, like, at the same time, I'm like, well, you sound like you just used, like, this is kind of spoilers, but you just, like, it's not really a spoiler because it's been kind of, like, public knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's based on true story. Yeah, but she, like, used Nick and, like, threw him under the bus pretty much. Like, the boyfriend that killed her mom. Yeah. And now he's, like, life in prison and she's, like, not life in prison but, like, ten years. I don't know how long she got, but, yeah, it's just kind of... Like, that does kind of suck for him. Yeah, she kind of just used like, They were both, like... That guy clearly it. probably had something, like, a mental mm-hmm. thing. Like, I, don't, I wonder if they could, like, look into that to, you know... Maybe yeah. not have him be life. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the legal system. Anything else? Oh, no, that's pretty much I it. I just move on. I'm going to blab or blab a lot around here. So you're good? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's start with the games here for me. So I played more Sekiro. I believe I did two streams since the last time I did this podcast. And it went all right. I think I said this on my last podcast. I'm at the final boss. Hey, guess what? I'm still there. I can't beat it. So I'm bad. I'm bad at video games, contrary to belief. I'm not good. Now, I don't think that way. It's hard. It's the final boss. But I quickly reiterate what I said last podcast. This always happens to me with from software games. I always just get stuck at the final boss. But I got really close. I was at the final phase of the final boss, and I got his health to about... It was like 30% remaining and then I died. I'm like, shit. Yeah, I'd be so, like, bye. So like, I know what I have to do to beat this boss. What do you have I know to it's do? not unbeatable. I just mean I know his like patterns. Oh, yeah. Like I can do it. I was beating myself up the one day. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do this. I think I should just stop playing the game now. Like just cancel this. But when I got him that close, I'm like, no, this is possible. I can do this. So... Hopefully within the last stream, or the next time I play this game, I can just beat this and put this game on the shelf and be like, okay, that's it. I'm done with it. Did you look up any guides or anything? No, I was going to actually, but I decided not to because it makes me feel better. It's just a personal thing, but like at the end of the day, it's like you could look it up and be like, oh, he's actually weak to fire or something like that, but I just like to try to figure out everything I can because... The last time I did that, I did that with the game called The Witness. Did you ever see me play that? That's the puzzle the game. The puzzle one, yeah. It's like lines and squares. They like listen to the bird. Yeah. yeah. I looked up things on that and I wish I didn't because you get a much well, better I satisfication. Don't know. A puzzle one's like different though. Like, it's hard though. So, yeah. Okay. This is where I think it's okay with The Witness. So The Witness is a really interesting example with that because some of the puzzles, you actually get brand new concepts of how they work. So, for example, like that bird, like sometimes 
you have to listen to how the bird chirps and you know where to draw the line it's Mm -hmm. it looks the witness if you don't know what game it is you basically it's a puzzle game where you draw a line to solve but this it looks simpler than it is like it's actually a very like you have to think really about it or look at the world in a different way or understand the concepts and some concepts i just didn't understand i'm Mm -hmm. sure a lot of people don't understand so my mental thing was like i would look at one just to understand the concept so i would see the answer to the first puzzle and then be like oh okay now i get it but then sometimes i'd be like wayne i'm still not getting this and look at the next one and the next one and i don't know it just made me upset knowing that i couldn't like i had to look online like almost like cheated and i don't want to yeah, do I don't that. like to do it with puzzle games. Yeah. But sometimes, like, you have to. Sometimes it's just, like, if you it's don't, hard. you'll kill yourself trying to figure it Everyone's out. Everyone's brain is different. Like, I don't mm-hmm. want to I don't want to criticize people who play like that. But, yeah, I, I don't know. It just personally, I'm like, I wish I didn't play this way and I actually never beat The Witness. That but... was me with Portal. Oh, really? Like, Portal 2. Some of those like, puzzles were hard. I never, like, looked stuff up, but I did ask Sean, like, how to beat it because he beat the game before me um i'm gonna move along uh yeah hopefully i'll beat sekiro uh i played more of the division two i played for about four hours i think i had one stream of it or maybe like less than four hours but still having fun i'm enjoying shooting the guns and completing the missions i actually had a really good stream the last time i played with it um i play or i got I got hosted and I got like seven viewers or something like that. So that was nice. And uh, hopefully they'll be there again because I get the stream after that. So that's not a good thing. But it was a good stream. But I don't know. That's just like business wise. I'm still enjoying the game. Although I have no idea what's going on in the story other than kill bad guys. We're good guys. Okay. (laughs) Uh the missions are starting to get a bit harder, I've noticed. Uh, when I was playing, I was dying a little bit more, uh, just kind of rushing in. I don't know. You know what? I'll honestly say this thing about it. I don't know if it was necessary that they were harder or that I was just getting a little nervous because I actually had people watching me because I'm not used to that. Yeah. <laughs> Usually in my streams, there's like one person or two people there. So <laughs> it could have been from that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm still enjoying uh, Division 2. I'll, I will play more of that. I really want to just deep dive into that once I beat Sekiro. Um, hey, you know what? Uh, we live in Pennsylvania, and we're in North Carolina, and that's not... Uh, it takes a little bit to drive there. Eight hours? We drove here, yes. Give or take. Maybe nine. But uh, I needed stuff to do while I uh, drove here. And uh, in the past couple of years, usually I've just watched shows, like I caught up on anime or other things. But this year, I'm just like, honestly, I think I talked a lot through it with just like my family because I haven't, now that I've moved out, I don't talk to them that much. But uh, I played a lot of Switch and I've been playing a lot of Shovel Knight and uh, I've been loving it. It's a great classic. I actually haven't played Shovel Knight since it originally came out on the Wii U. And I just wanted to play through it again because I do enjoy it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I actually beat the main story at Shovel Knight and it was good. Uh, but I'm trying. I'm seeing like grievances I have with Shovel Knight. Like I probably am the one person who doesn't think it's all cracked up. That cracked up because I don't love how you... Uh, how do I put this? It's like a very specific thing. Like the platforming, it feels very much like an old game. Like it's not as smooth. You have to like time your things perfectly like i don't know i just feel like shovel knight feels a little stiff for me but the bosses are fun and challenging the gameplay is fun and challenging it's a little challenging for me i'm not really good at platformers like i get a little frustrated like oh like i just missed that gap and now i died and it sucks and i get a little frustrated at the uh the death mechanic where you have to go pick up your bags and i feel like i always like will try to rush there and then i'm dying and losing the money and i'm like damn it but that's the Thing like dark souls but still i liked it i, I beat all shovel knight it's a classic and i started i bought i bought the edition on the switch that's called the treasure trove where you get four expansions for shovel knight so there's shovel knight where you play a shovel knight mm-hmm. and there's shovel knight 
I forget what it's called, but it's like Plague something, and you play as Plague Knight, which is a boss, and there's another one where you play as another boss called Spectre Knight. And you there's... just play the game as these characters? Yeah. Okay. And then the third one, which isn't out yet, you play as King Knight, and these are all bosses. And I was curious about these, because I like Shovel Knight, obviously, and it's actually a lot of fun playing as the different bosses. I've started the Plague Knight one, and the mechanics are like completely different. So with Shovel Knight... This little knight with a shovel, and your shovel is your basic move set. Like you have a swing, you'll have a downward thrust. So if you land on people, you kind of like hop off them and deal them damage. And then you have like an arsenal of like spells you can use. With Plague Knight, you have these little bombs that you throw, and then you also have spells you can use, like a better, like bigger bomb, or you have one where you'll gain health back if you kill people. And then you also have an ability where you hold your attack and you'll do like a big explosion and jump. So it kind of like changes the mechanics of the game almost completely playing as Plague Knight. And it's really cool and it's really refreshing. You can actually customize all of his, how his bombs act completely. So they'll eventually, uh, they'll start just like bombs. Like you, they arc and you throw them and they'll just explode in a little thing. And you'll throw three at once, but then you can change the type of explosion they are so maybe it's not just a blast maybe it builds like pillars or maybe they'll like build a cluster bomb you can change uh how the bombs act so you can have them be prolonged so you can throw them and they'll explode in like a couple seconds or you can have them throw and then they'll explode immediately or you can have them throw when an enemy's near or explode when an enemy's nearby and then you can also change oh, what was the third thing it's like the type of grenade and wait, did I already talk about that? I talked about the type of grenade. I talked about the trajectory. And there's a third thing. I can't think of it. But you just have... It's crazy how much customization you can do with just the mm -hmm. main attack. Like, you can really pick what kind of weapons you want for your run of playing as Plague Knight. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah like you can change up the gameplay. The, the best way I can describe the Plague Knight mode in this is like if you took shovel knight and it's like shovel knight 0.5 like you added way more depth that's cool. into shovel knight yeah and the great thing about shovel knight is that i have a whole nother campaign and there's another one still coming out so and i think they do that i think they do this in all these modes like they'll add they'll completely change the game and make it refreshing so it almost feels like i'm playing a new game but it's in the style of the same game because i love the style of play or the Shovel Knight games. Hey, and it's funny, you know, the company that, the studio that makes Shovel Knight is called Yacht Club. <laughs> um, That's all for Shovel Knight. Uh, there's a lot of other games I want to play when I'm on my vacation, but it's rapidly closing down, so I don't know what else I'll get to. Well, I'm sure I'll talk about it next week. Uh, quickly, just talk about some movies I watched. Uh, we talked about Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I liked it. Uh these can be tv shows as well i watched a little always sunny here on vacation and with my buddy hey always sunny still good i still go yeah. back to that always makes Except me we laugh still can't freaking find the 13th season yeah fxx or just fox whatever you call it they do this weird thing where they'll not like update the hulu right away when uh, always sunny comes on so we still haven't seen the latest season and it feels like they never add it until many years later don't know what's up with that uh i watched action point starring uh johnny knoxville that guy i was talking to my friend about the actual theme park that that's based on action park new jersey yeah it's like and i was telling him you how go. It, i don't want to go there i literally what, wouldn't ride on, any it's rides like two hours no, away no i don't want to go there because it's dangerous i'll take you there for anniversary do i have to show you the picture of the slide that's the loop where people literally got whiplash and some people I died. I think someone like, got almost The beheaded. loop is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And it, like, they don't have that anymore. I, yeah, I'm sure they still have something like it. No, they don't. They have, they have sure that thing is the stupidest like thing I've ever seen. Like that water park I went to when I was younger. Do people even understand how like anything works? Like, Nope. I, <sighs> that well, you know slide. that water park I went to, I got injured at, but it was still a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> my brother cut his foot on the pool because it was like broken okay that sounds like action park <laughs> i'm gonna say is action point all right movie it's it's weird because i explained this to my friend sean your brother uh it's 
action point is like Johnny Knoxville wanted to do a stunt movie like Jackass, but he wanted to put like a plot in there too. So it's like a a plot a Jackass movie well, with plot. Okay, I like Johnny Depp and not Johnny Depp. Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, Johnny Knoxville's a good. But he's funny. It's like he kind of was one note. He's yeah, Johnny Knoxville. exactly. And it's like he's why like are you crazy. Doing this? Like he's probably what almost like mid forties now, right? You could look it up. I'll look it up. I'd right guess now. that he's late forties. He's old. He's got a lot of problems too from all these stunts. And yeah, he did a he, he like did a good amount. Balls? Yeah, he did. He has to have like a catheter and stuff. But he's he did a good couple of stunts in uh, Action Point. I think it's a great concept for a movie though because that shit's real and I think it's funny. There's actually a part in the movie where they recreate like one of the commercials for Action Park, and I I was like, dude, this is actually what it was like. Because I've seen documentaries about Action Park. He's and 48. It's 48. Look at that. I called that. I said late 40s. You heard it here on the His podcast. His name is Philip John Clapp. Okay. <laughs> you, didn't they name no- Knoxville, Tennessee after him? Because he was born there? Is no, that a fact? Or is that why he's why... Is that why he's called yeah, Johnny bro. Knoxville? Because he's from Knoxville? They what? wouldn't have named it Knoxville <laughs> in 1971. No, dude. He's a big star. <laughs> They're like, this guy's gonna be big. <laughs> he's Knoxville, gonna hit himself Tennessee. in the balls. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna. Knoxville, Tennessee was not named in 1971 when he was born. <laughs> they should name Westchester Bam. They should. <laughs> Margera. Hey, you know what else I? Margera. You know what else I watched? Another quality film here: Star Wars: The Force Awakens. And Return of the Jedi. And I guess I saw a little bit of... Uh, what was the one on another? They were playing like all the Star Wars uh, movies on the, TV. The f- Return of the... Five, no, Return of the Jedi. Five. Revenge of the... No. It was five. The Empire Strikes Back. There we go. That's five. We just watched parts of them. Didn't watch them all. But I like Star Wars. We all like Star Wars. Yep. I, Sun's blinding I don't me. know if you saw this, but our one friend, uh, Nate... He did not like the new ones. Yeah, I saw your, his comment. I didn't on know Facebook. what to say to him because I'm like, oh, but I like clothes. <laughs> but he's really against them. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what to do here. I don't want to. I, I mean, I like them, but I don't want to start a fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, okay, our show of the vacation has been Impractical Jokers. Yes, I hey, love that Hate show. me now, but I love those guys. It's funny same they're great i've seen they're them live funny. and we're gonna see them live again in yeah they're funny in a couple months in august it's all funny yeah i like the show it's it's silly uh watch finding nemo classic it's all like part of that yeah i can't believe that movie's like pretty old i think it said 2002 it was three or two that's old yeah i'm old uh speaking yeah. of old movies the last one here toy story that's still a great fucking movie oh my god that's howdy, my howdy, howdy. that's my favorite Pixar movie. It's so good. You got any comments to say about that dog? That dog in Toy Story was made terribly. It's nightmare <laughs> fuel. Its eyes are like <laughs> eyes that I would like try to draw eyes on a person, <laughs> but they would be like so one dimensional. They right that's like accurate. the dog is like three D and then the eyes you are can just quote like one dimensional. She's eyes. right. <laughs> Look it up. You know, you know, honestly, Toy Story one dog. I didn't get to say this because when we were, we were like watching that and like playing like board games we're at the same Monopoly time. Monopoly for millennials. But but uh, when we were watching that, I could notice like how that was their first like Pixar movie. Like they were kind of like how they would move was kind of like a little janky. Like you could see like how they would just move around the characters because all like three D stuff is is they take the 3d models like they t-pose them then they kind of yeah. just will like move them especially around especially because that tv up there is like yeah super high it's like 4k yeah. so we we're watching like 4k toy story from 19 like 93 mm-hmm. and i could literally be like yeah i can tell how old this movie is but i think it still holds up as i'm biased it's my favorite pixar movie and probably one of my favorite animated movies ever i love it but we're gonna move on here because you know we're starting to get to our podcast length we're almost at two hours already well give or take we get to edit but uh, we're going on to section three, how games have brought us together. So I talked about early how I kind of almost, you know, as one of the reasons I was interested in meeting you is because you like video games. Yeah. You had that little Last of Us picture. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, let's talk about games. So, you know, we, of course, 
we bonded about Fallout, yep. and you honestly got me to play a lot of games thinking about it. Like, I never would have played really, like, I knew Bioshock 1 was a great game, but you really got me to play Bioshock 1 all the way through. And Bioshock 1 is a phenomenal game. Know, it might be one of my top 10 games of all time. It's great atmosphere, great gameplay, great, great environmental storytelling. What a fantastic game. I not, love those games. Not only that, though, but you also got me to play Life is Strange. Probably one of the best, uh, I don't know what kind of games you call those, like story. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it was a, it's a fantastic game, and it was so much fun, like just you even being there, like playing the game with me. Yeah, you did I that love a little that bit. Game. Like that's fun, like I like playing, it's, it's ironic that the games are single player, but it's a lot of fun to play them with people who enjoy the series a lot like if you sit there and like both play a single yeah. player game we did a little bit when we were trying to get through mass effect but yeah it's it's cool that we can do stuff like that mm -hmm. i got a couple other games here i mentioned bioshock that we can kind of talk about left for dead yeah we you used to play that. the shit out of left for dead I too know. you were really into left for i dead love too. that game and it pisses me off because i haven't played it in a while and if i go back on i'm gonna be shit and people it's like that point in a game's lifespan where, like, you can't be new and play this game. Like, you've had to play it. Because if you're, like, bad at all, they will they will kick you. They will shit talk you in the comments. Left 4 Dead 2, surprisingly toxic community. Yeah. Like, you would think, yeah, it's just, hey, I want to have a good time and just play Left 4 Dead 2. No, they were aggressively toxic. <laughs> yeah, I was playing that one mode one time where, like, people... Like, you get the gas. I think it's called Scavenger. It's, yeah. And right. you get the gas, and I was on the rooftop level. And, like, I was, like, playing just normal. Like, I don't know. But they they literally kicked me because they were mad I wasn't playing exactly how they normally play. It's like, why are you playing the same way every time? Like, and I swear people were rude to me because I was a girl, too. Like, and it happened. I had to change my name because people I agree would shit talk that me that right that away. could happen. And it's like, though, if they wanted to play a certain way... You could just play like you don't have to make it a public lobby you can make it a right? private lobby like why even i don't i don't get it like people are the, okay i'm gonna say it right now fuck all these pc players because that's the one grievance pc players are they're fucking toxic as all hell they PC are. players are the, some of the most toxic people i've ever played with and most of the multiplayer games i've played they've been very toxic and most of the people i play with on console games are not as toxic There'll be people shit talking, but it's not as bad. And like, <laughs> we would play Left 4 Dead 2 with Rachel, and she like trolled with those health packs. Like oh, she Jesus would take Christ. all of them, and she's like, "No, I didn't take them." She fucking took the health <laughs> kit. I had the health that is not permanent. It's like that, uh, like partial health where you use like. The pills. Yeah. It was the pills. And I needed it, and I'm like, what happened to the health? And she's like, oh, no, I think the other guy took it. I'm like, no, the other she guy isn't even in here. There. You're the only one in here. You took all the health kits and just got the four health or whatever you get yeah. when you're at near max. God damn it. Why are you going to bring this shit up? Because it's funny. Did you play a lot of... TF2, I feel like we talked about TF2. I used to play it. We actually didn't it. play didn't really together. I didn't know how to play it when I played it. it. Yeah. Like... I don't know. I see cringy stuff I posted on Facebook about TF2. <laughs> and, like, don't we all? I would always play, like, Pyro because that was easy. And, I like, I didn't really know how to play. I just went and tried to kill people. I feel like I'd be better now, but, again, it's one of those games, like, you uh, can't. Yeah, you don't go back no. to TF2. That is a cesspool. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's sad. I did really like TF2. I, I like TF2 pure. I'll say it right now. I liked it, like how it was on the orange box. I actually played a little bit of TF2 on the 360. And I was like, this is fun. Like, it's fine. Just vanilla, if you will. Not with all the hats and all the different weapons they added. Like, there's so much TF2, shit. TF2, the OG micro. There's so much shit in TF2. I don't even know what half of it does. Like, I'm just like, I guess I'll use this flare pistol. I don't know what it does in the pyro. Or I'll use the sandwich for the heavy. I don't fucking understand it. Or you get, like the soda for the scout i don't get it there's so much shit in mm -hmm. there you remember that hot second where we played the battlefield one open beta that and was you were fun. a god you were really good you beat <laughs> I... me on the scoreboard like twice and you won't admit it <laughs> well i don't know what i did i just played you were a god 
It was fun. It was fun. I believe she had Battlefield like, 1. I really like that Battlefield because 1. at that point we weren't like living together. Yeah. And I never really got to play games with you. So like we could, I could be at my house and you could be at your house. We could play on PS4 I'm so... and like and play together. So we did that with Minecraft too. That was fun. Oh, yeah, I didn't even put that in there. I like, I like playing that Minecraft. Was fun. I Minecraft's love playing a Minecraft. great uh, co-op game. It's I know, just people very talk relaxing. shit on Minecraft, but it's actually fun. Like it's a good game. I don't care if 10-year-olds play it. I had a point about Battlefield 1. I feel like I just lost it about playing multiplayer together. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel like I'm honestly kind of bad playing games with because I end up, like, focusing on the game too much. So it's hard for me to, like, try to talk with people. And I yeah. feel like that can even happen when I stream. Like, that's something I want to work on. So, like, yeah, I don't know if the Battlefield 1 was the best option you could pick there to, like, talk while we play online. But... No, I agree. Like, it was something that could help us, like, bond while we're not together. Like, you know, we're not on a date mm -hmm. or just hanging out. Uh, I put Overwatch on here. I don't even think we ever played Overwatch together. Like, maybe once or twice. Like, maybe yeah, if you when were I on was, Sean's like, on Sean's. PC or... I don't think... I, I never played on one of the open betas on PS4, did I? I don't think so. No, because you don't want to play because the achievements will come up on your thing. You're right. The trophies. I remember that now, yeah. You're like, don't open Overwatch on my <laughs> name because you'll get trophies that won't go me. away. You why can't delete I, it? Why do I care about that in 2019? You can delete it if you don't ain't earn any. Talk about some Castle Crashers. We played the shit out of that. Yeah, I we gifted that. you that on Steam and I'm like, yeah, play this together. It was a lot of fun. I'd still play it again. I love Castle Crashers. Didn't you say it's coming on Switch? I'm going to buy it on Switch. Yeah, we'll definitely. play it. I was expecting you to tell me about all the games you gifted me on Steam. That yeah, I never the played. ones you never played, like Shout Firewatch, to Firewatch and Potato. Egg. What the was egg. the Potato game? It's like it's a scary oh, potato. Jesus, yeah, it's like yeah, a horror horror game. Did you buy me Dad Shower with Dad Simulator? No, you, I think you got that. Someone for already, me. someone bought me that because it's like fifty it cents. Me. It always goes on <laughs> Shower with Dad Simulator. There's a phase where we just got into like Wii games, so we played Mario Kart Wii and Wii Sports and Wii Play. You know what I other? I love the Wii games. You know what other game though I liked on Steam? What's up? Cat, Cat goes, goes fishing. fishing. Well, we didn't play that together. Yeah, I know, but that was a fun one. Oh my god! Did they have like microtransactions? No, you just earned coins by sh by fishing oh and getting good fish. There was nothing to it. It's just a fishing game. There was nothing to it. No, I'd it have was to look fun. back in, into it. I feel like I was younger. Maybe I won't. Younger? That was like <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> no, it's fun. Uh, um, yeah, Wii Sports is always fun. Mario yeah, Kart you Wii. beat me in every single Wii game. You beat me in every game we play. Then you just have to get good. Wow. Get good, Megan. Rude. I can't beat you at Snipper Clips. Uh, it's co op. Yeah. <laughs> um. What else? Oh, you know what? I, when I was listening Overcooked Overcooked, is fun. I was listening to your podcast with Zach on it. Yeah. And one thing you guys didn't mention okay. was that's you. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. That game you. is fun. It's a great game. Yeah. Especially good like party you were saying, you, like if you drink like and play that to it's, you. It's good with like a crowd. Like mm -hmm. you can kind of get to know, or it's it's better if you ha know like your friends. Like, yeah. Because then you like, can just like pick on your friends, yeah. and it's really funny. Yeah, that's you. It's great. I I did forget about that. I love I, that. That too. was free when we got it. I don't think it's it free was anymore. With PlayStation Plus, you can get really cheap. You can get a physical for like ten dollars because there actually are physical car or CDs of it or Blu-ray, whatever it's called. Uh, I don't, other than that, I don't know what else to mention. Like Mario parties, mm -hmm. the, um, I mean the tiers of Mario parties. If Not you really count, tiers, but like if you count, like maybe like going to round one together. Round one's cool. Like yeah. it's an arcade where there's a bunch. A lot of, games. of like game, yeah. And well, like, we're playing Time Crisis. Mostly play game. Like, well, it's split. There are games you play by yourself. Well, not even just that, but like things like games at cons, like DDR. Uh, mm -hmm. the cube game does that multiplayer. The one that's like the light that like you bounce the light back and forth where there's the five buttons. That you know one what is I mean? fun. That I don't was know what that's called. Games, yeah. yeah. There's like that washing machine game that we played, but you can play like multiplayer stuff at like 
arcades and cons and stuff like that. Of course, there's a ton of single player games, but you had Time Crisis. That's cool. We played that Luigi's Mansion game when that was yeah, there. Rip. We played this uh, shitty Castlevania whip game. Yeah, I didn't like that uh, game. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, other than that, uh, the main theme of the podcast, though, how games bring you closer together. Do you got any stories you can tell me? I got some uh, little things, some notes here, maybe, that yeah, can help you inspire um, some yeah. talk. Um, well, when I was, like, 14, I would, like, play on Xbox Live. Um, I mean, at, at school, like, none of my friends played video games, and I was just kind of, like... I mean, that's not true. They did. Like, Rachel, we would play. Um, but other than that, not many they people They were just played. more into other passions yeah. or hobbies. Yeah, and um, so, like, I would make friends online. Like, my friend, like, from the UK, his name is John. He's, like, a friend of our family. Um, he lives in the UK, and, like, we've been friends with him for, like, almost 10 years it's crazy every time yeah, I hear it. I know. I just thinking about that like 10 years. That's crazy. Like I was in eighth grade and um, so there's like John and we would like send each other like packages. Like he would send like snacks from the UK and um, I sent him a couple times like some snacks. <laughs> Corey's blocking the sun from my eyes. It's really bad. It is. Um, and we would just like send snacks that each other doesn't have um each other don't have do not have, i don't know english don't have don't have yeah would... um then i know we would also play like zombies and stuff um we would play portal uh also another friend i was talking to at that time his name is cal like we kind of like we play a lot of Call of Duty, and then we kind of like didn't talk for a while. But then he got PS4, and we play Overwatch together now. Um, again, someone I've known for a while. Um, my one friend Katie, I didn't like meet her on like video games, but we would play like we also played Portal. Um, she lives in Illinois, and I actually went to visit her the first time like I ever went on a plane. Like I went. Um, by myself to visit her and I flew into Chicago and it was like it was kind of scary like I didn't think she was like a murderer or anything because like I didn't know her for like three or four years before I visited her and that's another person I've known for like almost 10 years like online wow. yeah thinking wow. about it um we still talk and stuff and just like visiting her out and I was like scary like like I said I didn't think I was like she was gonna murder me but it was like I don't know just nerve-wracking like seeing someone I never met um all right is it okay if i go back to john before yeah, you like yeah. keep going so like i think it's just crazy that you've known this person for like almost 10 years and john you haven't met yeah. in person ever yeah and he's literally from a different country yeah like, i think that's really great that you saw him or you met him through yeah. video games well, did he ever he would Skype a lot too? Yeah, yeah. He even like calls and messages very frequently. Not only her, but her brother and her mom, because mm -hmm. they all kind of knew him. Yeah, he's like a friend of all. Um, us. did you ever play like uh, what's it called? Like, did he play Uno? No, no. This is before I met John. Okay. Like when I was like twelve, and like I would play Uno. I had Uno antics. A lot of people know Uno from the camera. Yeah, and I had Uno. It was on the Xbox, like, 360. Like, yes. When it still had the blade set up, like, you know yep. what I mean? That was... Like, 2007 yeah. or eight. And we would play Uno. Oh, I have something else I want to bring up. Okay. okay I can't forget this. Um, after I tell this Uno story, I would play Uno, and, like, they had the cameras, and I was, like, 12. And, like, these people on here were disgusting. Like, they would ask for, like, boob camera footage and i'm like i'm 12 and they would like still ask and i'm like what the hell <laughs> like these people are messed up That's and i've seen internet. some disgusting stuff on there um what i wanted to bring up is shortly after the um probably in like 2008 or 9 um there was a setting that um netflix had where you could like invite people to parties and you would like your little xbox avatars would sit on a couch and watch netflix and oh it was, yeah, like, a watch yeah. Party. that was a cool feature yeah yeah and i remember doing that 
like with this one guy from my school and Zach and we would watch Skins circling back to that one article about Nicholas Holt we would watch <laughs> Skins and it was like really entertaining and um yeah like I forget that that feature I forget about that one yeah I forget what that was called that was cool yeah yeah I like that too I mean I never got to use it but I think that's a cool thing it's like watch together or something yeah, and yeah it was like you're in a theater and you see little avatars yeah, yeah I remember when that came out um also like my friend Rachel like we would always like a after high school we went on the same bus and we would play like uh what did we play we played this one game called might and magic and we were gods at that game like there's this one thing we did where you, you, you like fused together these monsters <laughs> And we triple fused like the best monster, and oh we just, shit, we wrecked. And I was so glad the guy didn't leave because one time we double fused. It was like a dragon. We <laughs> double fused a dragon, and the person left. And we did it. We triple fused a dragon. Another game, and the guy didn't leave. And I respect that guy so much. Um, I'm over here just like shaking my head at like how much how nerdy this shit is. I'm like just like looking at myself in the mirror like uh yep. Corey, you know we talk about <laughs> some stupid nerdy shit too um, and me and rachel we were just like professional trolls on xbox like we would go on call of duty and we would go on hanoi <laughs> on the one map and we would just block the people story cracks me up. yeah we would just block people in <laughs> in the one spawn point where there's only one way out it was like in a little garden and there was just like a doorway and only one person could fit through and you couldn't jump over and <laughs> When we would stand there and teammates would spawn behind us because they spawned near their team. And they would just, like, try to kill themselves and, like, they would just spawn again. And they were getting so mad and we would also just be really annoying and, like, meow in the, in the headsets and, like, <laughs> what else meow. did we play? I think we played Portal. I remember she also let me borrow her Fable. That was another game. I love Fable. I love like, the Fable, Fable series. Too. <clears throat> um, she let me borrow her Fable 3 and I had it for like a whole year and she's like hey can I get that back and I'm like no this is my game now and now we just have a joke where like she still has my copy of Fable 3 <laughs> and it's just really funny I have that too and yeah I just kept like one of my friends games yeah. although I kind of got mad because I had it the other way where I let my one friend borrow my game and he never gave it back and I'm like come on dude <laughs> yeah that's how it be sometimes. It'd be yeah, like you give and take. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Any um, of these? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about Club Penguin. I was like, really, I was just talking to my coworkers Rest in about peace. this. Yeah, like, it was really sad um, when Club Penguin, like, died. I was literally, like, crying. Like, me and my friends would go on there, and me and my friends you would... You played like, a lot during that last week. I know, and you I... got back into it. I was mad because, like, I'm just thinking about it, I'm getting sad, because this game was, like, literally my childhood. Also, I played Neopets, but not so much. Like, Club Penguin was my shit. Like, I had a membership for a while, but then I got pissed because when I didn't have the membership, I couldn't use the, um... The things that's, I bought. That's old school microtransactions, let me just tell you. I prefer a membership, though, as opposed to, like... Yeah, at least you know what you're getting. This. Yeah, because like as a member, you could get all the cool clothes and the cool igloos, and you could have like parties and invite. Oh, yeah, wrong though. No, and um, so there was that. Um, me and my friends played Club Penguin. I know my one friend Hannah and I would play a lot after school. We would like call each other on the phone and play, and like that's classic. <laughs> we would I like did that troll. Like we would find like Club Penguin boyfriends, and we would go up and like one of us would like give a heart, and then like. If the guy gave us a heart back, be like, will you be my boyfriend? And they'd say yes. And then me and Hannah would, like, trick him. And, like, I would walk away. And, like, Hannah would go up and give him a heart. And, like, invite her to him to her igloo. And they would, like, be giving hearts to each other. And then, like, I would show up and be like, you're cheating on me. And we would just do that to, like, these people in Club Penguin. <laughs> and we'd be, like, going back and forth. Like... <laughs> I thought the purpose of this was to get some sort of thing from them because I figured no. maybe you could gift like people stuff. So I thought like it was just funny. I thought too. maybe you could get like money or like a piece of clothing, no. but now you're just literally making a game within a game. <laughs> yeah, and there's a there's actually a bunch of fun games in Club Penguin, like the coffee stacking game and the pizza game. Um, I would always name my puffles after my my uh, middle school crushes. So. 
Yep. <laughs> um, Puffles sounds like a good cereal. Yeah. Um, what else did I play? I played Club Penguin, Neopets. Club Penguin was definitely like the... I don't know how to put this nicely, but like babies, like RuneScape or something like that. <laughs> I love it's like Penguin. a free to play, I would still like play it. yeah, but literally it's like similar to it, what would... RuneScape was. Yeah, they made that mobile game, and then that and got canceled because no one liked it. Because why would they make it a mobile game? That was stupid. They should have just made one that works on both your computer and phone. I will phone, never and it's be like... over Club Penguin. I'm telling you that right now. Like thinking about it right now, I'm so sad. Like. That was my childhood, and it was such. It was so fun, and it was so like some good such club penguin good memes quality, every like, once in a while. Yeah, there is, and people would make those club penguin music videos that I would watch, where they like have this song and they'd have their penguin like going into different parts of the world, and they would have them like typing up the lyrics, and it was just really funny. Oh my God, <laughs> you never told me about this. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if this can still be a thing, knowing that you like that. Well. It's been a thing for almost four years, so suck it up, Buttercup. What kind of songs did you listen to? I feel like, as much as of a meme this is, I feel like a Linkin Park. I listen to, like, Linkin Park. Um, maybe some, like, I think I remember Fergalicious being one of them. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't really know what else. Probably just, like, the songs I liked at the time. Like, maybe some Screamo. Club Penguin Screamo. What's the name of that one guy who you always bring up who has, like, black hair and, like, one beat his wife? Oh, Ronnie Radke? What's the other one that I get confused who also looks like him? Um, They're both, like, emo, screamo. Was he in a band? I don't know. Was it the one that's a piece of garbage Probably. and is like molest little girls? Yeah. That's Stoppy Vanity from Blood on they the They look Dance exactly Blood. the same. No, they don't. Ronnie's the least Google both cuter. of them. I'm going to. No, I meant like the viewers oh. or listeners. They don't look the same. Exactly. Stoppy Vanity the same is a piece person. Of garbage Conspiracy theory. Children. They're the same person. No. It's, it's a flawless argument, just like birds are fake. That's true. I won't argue that. Hey, look. Give me your hand. We did podcast. Yes. We did physical handshake. We're doing it right now. Yep. Podcast complete. I am I need something in me. Food. I know. I'm getting booze, hungry too. Yeah, all the above. Drink. There's sun in both of our eyes. Yep. You had to deal with it longer. I can't I'm believe shorter. I had to put you through this. Worst guest treatment ever. <laughs> Don't yelp me. If you do, five stars. Wow. Leave a, at least one heart. Just because, wow. you know, people like to see that. They know it's a good thing. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to end this. How do we end this? Uh, what if I just throw the microphone into the pool right now? Would you really do that? <laughs> With your mic? It's $100. It's $100. No. Just yeet your uh, keyboard in there. No, that was also $100. And it was a gift. It was from Santa Claus. Santa yeah. made, made his elves make that for me. And he gave it to me personally. That's what my mom told guest? me, at least. That's a great idea. Uh, go to patreon.com slash gamebrocory and <laughs> donate money so I can get Santa as my next guest. He's pretty busy this time of year. Yep, it's almost time for Christmas in July. That actually reminded me I should do some of this, some plugs before we do wrap this up quick. Don't forget to check me out. I'm gamebrocory on all my socials. Uh, check me out on Twitch. I should be figuring out a live stream live stream schedule check out my youtube channel you know i'll be posting the podcast on there and hopefully some clips or some sort of content on there and don't forget the twitter and the instagram the gram that's where i post all my cool that's content. what the cool kids say you got anything the to plug gram. yeah um i guess my instagram okay it's just cats are perfect with two T's at the end of perfect. I mean, if you ever decide to make any other content, yeah, people I was know where to go. Vlogs, yeah, you know, if you want to start doing that again. That's a thing I was doing. I, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh.